Hello, everyone. Nice to see you again. Today, we are going to talk about data, data type, type system. And in the next lecture, chapter three, we are going to talk about memory model. And everything in chapter two and three are related to data, uh, memory model and data type for today. So what is data? So when we talk about data, the related issue is data type, data storage, sometimes storage class, and also data structure, data organization. These are internal, internal uh, features. And then you need to have data representation, data visualization. So these are related to data science. And this side, data engineering. So we are teaching programming languages, so we're more related to data engineering, how to uh, prepare data and how to store data and how to operate data. And we are talking about the programming language support for the data, data type, data storage, data structure, data naming system. And today in lecture two, we are more focused on type. So we are going to talk about data type, type system, pretty much data type, name value and expression and composite data type. So these are conceptual data. And in hardware, we have data storage, memory location, and also bit representation. That's another story. But here we are talking about the programming language side of the story. And chapter three, we are going to talk about memory model. That's a different story. Uh, different domain of the data. So data types. So data types, we primarily had two types of data, quantitative data and the qualitative data. And quantitative data, usually you have the integer number or real number. And real number, sometimes we call it floating point number. That's quantitative data or numerical data. The other side of the story is qualitative data and categorize the data. So such as uh, stone class five, four, three, two, one, stone category, stone, stone. And you may have your gray, your gray, a, B, C, D, E, F, okay, your score. So you categorize things, you say good, you say bad, you say acceptable, you say not acceptable. So qualitative uh, data usually involve personal evaluation. And quantitative data is more scientific. And as a programming language, we should support both, both sides of the story, both sides of the story, qualitative or quantitative, both way. And quantitative data, we also can divide it into two parts, discrete number that we call it integer or continuous value that we call it real numbers. So here, quantitatively, we can show the bar chart or show the line chart. And then qualitatively, uh, we can show them by pie chart or different way you show it. Uh, you can actually uh, try your best to do data visualization. And data presentation by itself is an art. It's an art. How you can create a convincing chart uh, that is a really a, a art. It's beyond only scientific study. Okay, data science process. We collect raw data from the reality 
and we process it, we clean it, we kick out of the embedded data, and we actually uh, try to make up or pre repair some data. <clears throat> and then we actually start to do explore, exploratory uh, data analysis. And we send the data to the data model and allow the data model to be learned um, using machine learning algorithm, or sometimes you use a decision algorithm to process the data. And then we prepare the data for visualization and send it for the top level executive to make decision. And we may also sell it as data products such as advertisement <clears throat> or notice. Okay, so the, these are data, data products. So data is very useful and data science now is very popular. So for our course here, we try to emphasize on the data preparation and data engineering side of the story and how program language can support it. So data type, we all have developed an intuitive notion of what data type is. So what really is a data type? Data type actually uh, associated with a few problems. Number one, your storage class. That actually in your memory. Number two, your representation. Number three, your computation. So representation means the number of bits. Okay, so basically you are exponent a uh, floating point number represented by IEEE 754 standard one sign bit A uh, exponent bit 23 uh, minty sign bit. That's data representation. Storage class, you can be a static data you can be a uh, instance data. You can be a register. You can be a external shared data. You can be a local data. So that's the storage class where you store the data and the visibility and accessibility of the data. We call it storage class. And also computation that is come uh, algorithm. Say you use a tools complement for calculation or you use a boost multiplier algorithm. So that's computation side of the story. So data file really determine many things, including storage class, representation and computation that will be associated with it. So it is not a very, very simple uh, idea only. It actually has involved the internal structure of the data. And these are primitive data type. We may also have some more advanced data types such as abstract data type. And those may be associated with some operations such as add, delete, remove, insert, append, those different type of the operations. And semantical validity such as integer, you cannot have uh, 2.3, that's not integer. Okay, so there's a, semantical uh, validity and readability. The type specified explicitly in the source program will make it more readable. So in, in the programming language design, the data type, uh, how you design the data type is very important. Also performance optimization. You don't want to waste your memory, uh, memory size. Uh, you also don't want to have your program to run too slow. Also, you don't also want, don't want to lose your resolution number of bits. Uh, so it actually related to many things, basically computational wise, also representation wise, also storage wise. There are three major concerns about your data. So what are types good for? And Implicit content, check it. Okay, so uh, in our uh, in our uh, compiler system, we need to check the data type, okay, to make sure that certain meaningless operation do not occur, and also prevent the uh, the erroneous uh, the error uh, of the syntax error. So type checking, okay, but sometimes you still will run into trouble, such as 
division by zero, okay? And you may also have the index out of bound problem. So you cannot use compiler to find out every problem, but you can prevent some of them. Polymorphism result when a compiler find it is, it doesn't need to know certain things. So you are, yeah, sometimes you also have a polymorphism issue. Type system. So data type is associated with a single piece of data. Now let's look at the type system. So type system is how you determine data type. So you have runtime uh, typing, that's called dynamic typing. So you determine your data type uh, at the runtime. Uh, these scripting languages such as Python and JavaScript, they mainly are uh, dynamic typing uh, language. So their data type will be determined at the runtime. And you can sometimes assign uh, data of different type to a same variable. Okay. And if you write the data in C double plus or ADA, on the other hand, uh, it will be more stronger type. Okay. So it really depends on which language you like uh, and also depend on your, your uh, habit of dealing with the dynamic typing uh, uh, language or static typing uh, language. Also your programming paradigm. So dynamic checking incur some runtime overhead and may delay the di discovery of the bug. So dynamic typing is more flexible, but it actually usually is slower. Okay, so the choice between static and dynamic typing uh, promises to provide one of the most interesting language debate of the coming decade. So actually it had been in dispute for a long time. And sometimes it just depends on the application. So the data science, people may like to use dynamic typing because you can put data onto the website with server at the wrong time and you can assign many things to it. On the other hand, some desktop computation, you want to optimize your performance. Sometimes you don't want it to be so flexible. So it really, it, there's no clear winner of which type of a, a typing should be used. Okay, so right here is a brief summary of the different uh, data uh, programming language and their related uh, data types. So in terms of typing, dynamic typing is on the left side, static typing is on the right side. So usually the static, statically typed language, you need to, declare the data type at the uh, compile time. And then you have strong type language such as Java, Scala, or C sharp that you don't allow the ambiguity. And some of the language are static compiled, but you, they allow ambiguity such as C language or C double language. Uh, you can have casting, you can have the union, uh, sometimes you can share bits, so those languages are considered to be weakly typed. So weakly typed means that uh, when you decide the type, it will sometimes be blurred and you can change it. That's called a uh, weaker type language, okay? So here we have four quadrant of the different language by the strong strengths of its type and also by its compile time uh, or runtime uh, typing. So type system is the complete system of how you determine a variable's type. So common lips is strong type, but statically uh, typed. And ADA is statically typed, so you need to declare it, okay? Uh, common list is strong type, but not, not static type. So common list is strong type, but it is uh, dynamic typing. Pascal is almost static type, so you need to declare them. Java is strongly typed, but uh, with a non-trivial mixture of things that can be checked statically and things have to be checked dynamically. So Python mostly is uh, strong type, but because of they allow the polymorphism, so there are certain gray area in uh, Java. 
And C language has become more strong type with each version coming to be more strong type. But uh, in the old day, you can easily uh, cast in your integer to pointer, pointer to enum, and then you can uh, change the data type uh, really easily. So, so C language by he uh, actually by nature uh, is more weakly typed, but each version may start continue to improve its uh, strength of the type. Okay, so that's the typing system. So starting state is how you determine your data type. So we talk about data types and how we determine the type. So here we will continue to talk, to talk about this different issue, including um, polymorphism, also commonality, uh, type equivalence, type inference, type compatibility, and the composite data types. So first let's look at C double plus data type. So C double plus data type, you have primitive data type and also derived data type and also the user defined data type. So primitive data type means a dummy data type. The dummy means that you have certain data storage and you have memory address associated with some variable A and you put some value in there. That's primitive data type. So you directly put your data in there. That's called a primitive data type. Okay. Second type derives such as your array. You have a array and you have index, and you can calculate the using the index to calculate the ages. That's called derived data type. Okay. And you can also use pointer to point to certain location and also reference, so these are the right type. I think that this one actually is based on primitive type, but make it a combo type. Then we have the structure, union, and class. These are open for user to design it, okay? User to design it. And there come two more problems. Okay, primitive data type, you directly store data into there. The user defined data type, you start to have the reference and you start to have the pointer. Okay, so these two are indirect uh, data, indirect data. So, so pointer may be pointing to a certain object in the heap. And then there's the ages. You indirectly uh, put in your data to a certain location. That's called pointer you really store its ages, okay? And you may also create a reference that's alias, so such as integer alias Q equals P, then Q and P basically pointing uh, SS in the same data, okay? So, so that's the, your, your alias. So here we are not trying to teach you the whole story behind C double plus. But just to show you that there is certain data type, they are primitive and they have memory uh, uh, ages and you directly put data into there as primitive data type. And you have derived data type and you just derive data type such as a pointer. Then you will indirect pointing your data to the storage and you may put the ages into the pointer, okay? And then reference data type is the opposite of it, okay? Reference is opposite of it. And reference, you directly uh, store your integer uh, reference B, okay, equals A. So then uh, this B and A will share the same storage. So that's the reference type, okay? Uh, we will find time to discuss this later. Okay, and C double plus has its memory model. So this one I think right now is the standard Unis, Linux uh, memory uh, map, okay, your memory model. So basically you have one part, we call it uh, instruction, set, uh, instruction segment, IS, okay. And you may also have another one called data segment. 
And then last one is the stack and heap. We call it the stack segment. And PC actually have one more segment called extra segment. So four segment in your Intel processor and Windows is uh, PC. And each segment you store either the code or the data. And this data usually are static data or you store the dynamic data. Dynamic data, uh, you have one part that's local data stored in, in stack and uh, dynamic allocated data stored in heap. Okay, so these are the many model we have for C++ language. And each of your program uh, will have some data. They will be allocated in two different po portion. Okay, your program by itself will be loaded to instruction section. Okay, instruction segment. And then your data will be loaded to the data segment. And depending on which type of data you have, if you have the constant, we call it literal, it will be put into the literal section. And if it is static data or class data or module data, we put into the static area. And if your variable is declared in your function, then you can find it in the stack in the corporate. And if you dynamically allocate some memory to some object that's in the heap. Okay, so in assembly, we have register, um, register mode uh, instruction, in immediate uh, instruction, displacement, indirect, index, and delay uh, index. So these different instruction are used to support our different uh, memory models, okay? So this is a CPU access model. Uh, usually you can use the interrail model for pointers. You use a register for the temporary storage or temporary variables. You use the immediate uh, edges mode for constants. Okay, the displacement because you had a frame pointer and a offset then you can use a log for local variable in the stack. Okay, so here, as you can see, this different uh, uh, instruction mode will be used by different type of the high level language constructs. Okay, memory hierarchy. So memory sometimes is too big to fit into one chip within the processor. So sometimes we have on chip cache, sometimes we have off chip cache, sometimes we have memory, uh, memory, main memory. So from CPU register to cache, uh, first cache, then second cache and third cache, we call it the memory hierarchy and then to main memory and then to secondary storage, okay? Each level will become bigger and bigger, slower and slower. So memory hierarchy usually keep the most recently used data into your cache and then you repress by uh, some openly used data. If some data actually is not openly used, you got kick, you got kicked out from the cache. Okay, so here are the time. The register operation are 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 nanosecond. Uh, the level one cache is about one nanosecond. Level two, level three are about four to 30 nanosecond. These data may not be the newest data. Uh, this actually are the data provided in the year 2015. So as you can see the memory hierarchy, the bigger the storage size, uh, the slower the, the access time will be. Okay. So uh, we try to optimize our compiler to be, to, to prevent the uh, cache miss. We try to uh, make the cache heat ratio to be higher. Okay, so this uh, actually is an important uh, design issue when we design our compiler and design our programming language about this uh, case utilization problem. Okay, Python language is a language built upon C language. So basically you can think about uh, the real resource will primarily be generated by C language. So in terms of access in the hardware from your Python virtual machine, uh, 
uh, you actually operate all the Python uh, operation on Python virtual machine, but Python virtual machine is really written in C language. So at the lower level, you do allocate those register instruction to help your Python operations. But from Python programmer point of view, they are using the language that has pure object-oriented programming model. That means that all of the data being used in Python are objects. So Python data type, we have string, integer, flow, uh, Boolean. So basically we have three types of the data. You can call integer and flow as number. So we have the Boolean data, logic data, or Boolean data, string data or text data, and also integer data or number data. Okay, these are three main categories. Integer and the floating point number sometimes are a mutual is uh, exchangeable in uh, Python because Python does not really have the uh, type checking. Uh, it doesn't declare the type. So sometimes they will automatically change the data type for you. Okay, so basically these are the different primitive data type in Python. Okay, so Python data type, you have numerical data that's integer flow and compress. Uh, compress is a built-in data type, but it's really a some sort of a class, uh, object, okay? Object with class. And we have composite data types such as set, string, list, and tuple. We also call it sequence data type, okay? And if it is ordered, we call it string, list, or tuple. If it is unordered, we call it set. And also set is uh, no duplicate data type. And string, list, tuple, you, you may allow duplicate, duplication. And then we also have mapping, uh, that's dictionary. So they may be built by hash, uh, hash map, okay, to improve the performance. So they are also one uh, mapping type. So on the right side, we can also call it composite data type. On the left side, we can also call it the, the so-called uh, primitive data type. Okay, except for the complex. Complex is more like compound data type, okay. Okay, anyway, these are, these are Python data type. So Python data type and the JSON, JSON is JavaScript object notation. Uh, Python data type and JSON uh, object model is they are very similar. Python string is JSON string. Python integer is JSON number. Python flow is also JSON number. And Python flow is JSON's real. Python's bool is JSON's boolean. Python's list is JSON's array. Python's dictionary is JSON's object. And Python's none would be uh, JSON's null. So as you can see, the JSON data format is very close to Python. And because of the convenience of programming, I do strongly re recommend you to write your Python code or JSON code closing to each other. Don't try to create uh, incompatible programs and you will just make your integration of the software much difficult to do. Okay, but uh, Python does not only have this different type. For numerical computation, you may also want to use NumPy or NumPy. And NumPy or NumPy, they have some advantage of providing the arrays, providing more data type and it will make your scientific note, uh, computation possible in Python and also may improve performance because some data type like array is actually faster than list in Python. So NumPy can also improve the performance. Expression and value. So what does a program do? Python has some token. So A or uh, H-O-Y, okay, these are two 
uh, different stream and you can combine them together to become a whole. You can combine them by a whole. So we have tokens, we have value, you can do computation in it. And then, uh, okay, that's what uh, Pokemon do. So Pokemon have different value, integer, 14 point, uh, Boolean and string. Okay, expression. And expression describe a computation and evaluates to a value. So this one expression is somewhat like a phrase. Okay, token more like a word, a single word and expression like a phrase such as in my home, such as at the park, such as in a moment, okay? And expression is usually a part of the sentence. And the whole sentence in a programming language is sometimes we call it a statement. Partial uh, statement, we call it a, an expression. Okay, so you can also call function and function call is also a expression. Okay, so here we do know about this different expression. So an expression including the operator and operates. Okay, operator and operates. Okay, so here we can actually uh, evaluate a nested expression. The reason why we are showing you this here is because that uh, the, the operation of some expression sometimes can be constructed into some syntax tree and this we call it expression tree or syntax tree and in later in the compiler we will know about this more okay names each variable may have a name so say x is the name and the value that we assign to it is called a value Okay, so x equals seven, x is the name, seven is the value. And we may have a name that equal to a expression. Okay, so an expression may also return some value, even though it's a combination of some operator and some operands. Okay, but it, as long as it will return you some value, we can call it an expression. Okay, so name is how we bound the data to the memory location. That's by the name. So naming system will be talked about in chapter three. And then it can be reused to rebind with different data. Okay. Uh, sometimes we call it rebinding, sometimes we call it redirection. And either word is actually uh, acceptable. Okay, composite data type. Uh, in composite data type in Python system, we mainly would like to talk about the so-called string. String is a collection of characters. And then tuple, tuple is a collection of data by immutable. Immutable means that your tuple, you cannot increase the size or decrease the size. And it's use the parentheses. String use the double quote. And then we have the this that use the brackets. And then we may also have the set using the curly braces. And then we have dictionary that use a, a key and value pair separate by the column. And you also use a curly brace. So each of the pair of the data is the key and value. Key and value pair will be put into your dictionary. So in Python language, we do have breaker. We call it, uh, we can, we can, well, we can, you say that tuple is one kind of uh, record. We can also say dictionary is one kind of record. So uh, it depends, it really depends how you use it, okay? An array is similar to this, but not the same, not, not, not 100 percent the same. Okay. An array chain tuple array and these these are actually similar stuff. Okay, but there are some subtle differences. And set is non-recurring data. Each set element can only show up once. So that's a different composite data type. 
dictionary is a mapping. We have a key and value pair. And in this chapter, we don't talk about pointer and file. We mainly focus on the composite data type only. So Python data type string, we use double quote, double quote, okay? Double, we use parentheses. And this, we use brackets. Set, we use curly brace. Dictionary, we use uh, curly brace, but each item has key value pair. And the main difference between tuple and this is tuple, you cannot change the size of the tuple, no increase or no change on the size of the tuple. And tuple is immutable. This is immutable, so you can expand the data. And set is now recurring. Now let's look at the string data type. Uh, we would like to look at different composite data type and we get started with string. And string is enclosed by double quote, double quote, tuple enclosed by parentheses, uh, this uh, enclosed by the brackets, set by curly brackets, and a dictionary has the key value tuples. Okay, anyway, let's look at the strings. And the way I would like to present it is I would have half screen uh, looking at the slice. And then the other half of the screen, I'm going to bring up my coding part. Okay, so there are some simple code you can download from internet. Okay, uh, there are string one, string two, different uh, code you can download from internet for my slices. But in order to teach you the, this uh, material, so I would like to just type it in the class to have a live demo instead of using the code that we have from the files. So here I'm going to redo it again. Okay, here I'm going to redo it again. Let me adjust the window a little bit, not get bothered by the Zoom's uh, control key. Okay, anyway, so now we get started. First thing is that we would like to look at the strings. And strings, you have the string creation, indexing, slicing, operation, and methods. Let's get started with string number one. Okay, so here I have a Visual Studio code and the Visual Studio code editor, I have a uh, download, uh, actually installation guide. I have the installation guide, uh, let me see. The installation guide, you can find it uh, from start here. There is the installation guide for Python and also Python IDE, idle package. And here you have the installation guide for Visual Studio Code and C double plus. So I don't repeat that. So you basically find the, the installation guide, you should be able to install it. So here I'm going to get started to for the topics. So first thing is that you can actually create a string and string have many types, okay? String have many types. You have the F type, R type, U type. So if you have just had the two double code, you have string one, okay? So string one equals A, B, C, this is a string. And string two equals a single quote C, okay? And this one is single character. And in Python, the string and the character is the same, okay? You can use a single quote, double quote, triple quote, uh, is actually the same. Okay, now let's adjust it. Uh, let me actually uh, change it. Cut this one, put it over here. Let me call this a single character as string one, single quote, uh, string two as uh, double quote. Okay, and you can also declare a string three equals quote, quote, quote. Okay, and then A, B, C, D, E. These are all the same. These are all uh, creation of the string. And you can also have a, a string F, okay. String F is formatted string. So let's uh, look at uh, here, let's do F, okay. Let's do F and then it's formatted string and you can put the 
uh, format, okay, you can put the proper format in there as a format history. So here I don't focus on that, okay, I don't focus on that. And you have the row string, row string, when you interpret it, it will not interpret this one as new line mark. So when you do print, and it will be interpreted as uh, the row string. So row string, you print out backslash n. But if you, if you delete the r, it will be the normal string. And you'll see nothing. You see that you will be a change line mark. So uh, this row string and uh, the cook string, it actually is different. So here, remember the string creation, you use a double quote, okay? And can you do this? Can you do uh, A, A, and then equals uh, str of A, A, A using constructor? Okay, using constructor is the same thing, but it, normally we don't need that. Okay, that's the first part, creation of the string. The next one is, okay, no, I'm sorry. You should also try to use the type checker to check if a string is of string type. Okay, you should see the class string, a data type is string type. Let me actually minimize this portion, maximize this display portion. Okay, let's, let's close it. Okay, so that actually show you the creation of the string. Next one, indexing. Indexing when we have a string, uh, let's have the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. Okay, the indexing, sometimes I just put on top of this uh, here, I put 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. Okay, so index starting from zero, and then it keep increasing. So right here, the total length would be this one, it would be 11. The total length is 11 characters. And then the 11, index 11 has no data, has no data. Okay, index 11 has no data. Okay, so that's indexing, uh, simple indexing, and you can print S2. So using the array notation to get it, you can see uh, index two is three. Now let's look at slicing. So the slicing is a technique. So let's look at slicing. So slicing actually usually has three numbers. So it's a star, ending index, and step size, okay? So that's the slicing. So let's look at the original string is S. So if we have S, okay, starting at one, okay, ending at 11, 11 not included because of the density is 11. So 11 have no data. And every two later, we get one. So we'll get B, D, F, H, J, okay, this, this will be the data that we, we will get. <clears throat> so right here, because I'm, uh, we, I'm trying to review this different idea. So it is not like normally I may teach slower. Here, uh, this basic data type is, is considered to be something you ha have already learned. So we only give you the review part. So just quickly go through different uh, data type and ideas. So this one, we get that. Okay, we get that as a stepping. <clears throat> so now, if you only have one number, if you have only one number, so let's do point S2. Only one number, it will be the single indexing, you get a C that we already know. Okay, let's single indexing. If we get a uh, two number, and that should be, two numbers should be S of the star and uh, N, and N is not included. Okay, so this one would be 
uh, actually, let me see. This one will give you, this one will give you zero, one, two, three. So it would be A, B, C, D, okay? It will be A, B, C, D for this one. And the steps in size D4 is one, okay? If you miss that out. So that guy actually is this, okay? So two number will be starting and ending. Let me, let me save, okay, let me save. Okay, let me draw again. Okay, that would be A, B, C, D for zero, one, two, three. Okay, that's the slicing. So that's actually two number. If you should to see two number, one number is individual a number. If the index is out of bound, then you will get exception. Okay, that's two number. And then let's see, if we have three number, it actually would be the normal format, okay? So now if we don't put uh, the first number, okay? But we do give you the end and uh, the, the step size. So let's look at uh, print, nothing, and then 11, and then two. Okay, this one was starting from, this one is equivalent to S starting from zero and then to the end and then jump by to step size. Okay, so you will get A, C, E, G, I, and K. Okay, that is what you will get. That's the slicing. Okay, now next one. Okay, this one is that. Now this one, next one is if you don't give them uh, the, the ending part, then it would be ending at uh, the length of the uh, S, okay. So you don't have that, don't have the ending part, but you do keep the colon. So here let's start from three and end it at the end of the string. And then uh, let's jump by three, okay? So this one. So this one we got starting from three, jump by three, you'll be D, G, and J. Okay, D, G, and J. Okay, so that actually is when you don't have the middle one, I'm sorry when you don't have the middle uh, index. It is equivalent to this, okay? So that's slicing. Slicing, uh, you can get a different way to slice your data. It's very powerful, okay? And with step side, you skip it, it will be, minus, uh, it will be one, okay? So now we, we actually pretty much I know about the slicing, basic slicing. First number, you don't provide it, it will be zero. Second number, you don't provide it, it will be the length of the string. Third number, you don't provide it, it will be one, okay? Now, uh, negative indexing. So negative indexing, you can uh, think about it in this way. Let's assume that we have some number here, okay? So here, this one, K, K will be, uh, the, uh, the, the negative indexing will be using uh, negative numbers, okay? So the last data will be minus one. So we will have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So the indexing will be like this. Okay, like this. Okay, so if we print S or um, uh, actually mass one, this one is equivalent to the length of S minus one, okay. And if we do uh, print S minus four, this one is equivalent to the 
and then minus four. Okay, something like that. So let's say try. Okay, so that's the result we have. This one, minus one, minus four is H, okay. So that's a negative indexing when we use a, a negative number. So right here, let's try this one. Green, green minus seven up to minus three. Okay, this one really means It really means this. Okay, it really means this. So you have E, F, G, H. Starting from minus seven to minus three, but minus three not included, so up to minus four. So it would be E, F, G, H. That's the result we get E, F, G, H, okay? So this is how you look at the slicing. So now let's try this one. Let's try S, nothing, nothing, minus one. Okay, so nothing, nothing minus one, uh, it will, it will get one. You, you will actually get one. Uh, you will actually get uh, nothing. You get your reverse. You get your reverse. You get your reverse. So that actually equivalent to Okay, you actually get started from length of the S minus one and then down to zero. And then actually you do minus one. So that is a standard way to do reverse of the string. Okay, this is the reverse of the string. Okay, these are the slicing. Okay, these are the slicing. So here if we do uh, here we do S minus four to nothing and then minus one. This really means So this one will get from H down to A. Okay, H down to A. Okay, thank you. This portion is the slicing. So I spend more time on the slicing because it's very important when de you deal with the string, okay? Next one is string operation. So string operation, we do have, um, let's see, let's look at the table, okay? We had different operations. Let me see, do we had a uh, string measures. So plus sign for concatenation. And then you have an in to check if the character is inside it or part of it. So this one is contain checking. Okay, so plus sign for concatenation, uh, star for repeat. Okay, start for repeat. So usually start, we sometimes do this. This one, you print out 10 stars. Okay, you print out 10 stars. So that's a repetition. And then you have interesting selection, we know it. The length of the string, you put LEN function, okay? We already show you here uh, with some lens, okay, this one. 
with the lens. Okay, and you uh, strain is also iterable. So you can basically put a strain over there. So let's see, we can do force character in uh, S, nothing, nothing minus one. That's the reverse of the S and we print CH, okay. And equals a spacing, okay. At the very end, we do change line. So this one, let's see. you get the reverse of the stream by each one of them uh, separately by a space. And then at the end of the stream, uh, you actually change the line, okay? So that's the idea that you actually iterate through your stream using for loop. Okay, so here we have a capitalize that will uh, copy the data only for first data capitalized. So here we have B equals uh, wrong that can be realized. Okay. Okay, it becomes wrong. So center copy as center in the field with a given width. So let's see if we have this A, B, C, D scene. So we do print as that center of three later, a center three letters. Let me see, copy centered in the is given this. Okay, this one we do need to uh, center with copy as center in the field. Okay, let me see. Let's see, RS we notice. Okay, so this one, A, B, C, D. Oh, I'm sorry, I should print C3. Okay, let me see. This one actually the three doesn't work. It actually just print out the S itself. Copy S center in the field. Okay, I'm not sure of the width. And you can count the substream pattern. You can count the substream pattern using count. So let's assume that we have a data X and then we have A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. And we do print as the count of the substream A, B. Uh, you will show it as you seven times. This one join, join we uh, commonly uh, see, okay. So usually is uh, join is the, join is used to convert from string to list and list to string, okay. So basically you have a string, that's a string, your string is A, B, C, D, okay, up to K, you can convert it to a list by using the list of S, okay you can convert it that in that way. Okay, so we can do this. Uh, L, S, S list, of course, list of the S string. And we save and we run. And we get, oh, I'm sorry, I should put it. Okay, that become a list. But the reverse uh, of the of the this one, we convert it back to a list. That's uh, okay. We convert it back to SX. Uh, it will be this S list, 
Okay, this associate we should join join by uh, by a empty string. And in this way, we will join back to the original uh, format of the string. We go back to this, okay? But if we put a star in there, it will be separated by star. Uh, this is open this scenes uh, function, okay? So that's... Uh, a join file, you can find the position of the sub. But only problem with this file is that if you don't find it, you will get a exception. So let's try this one. This is very, uh, you need to be careful. Okay, it's not, it's different from the index of functions. So let's see here, if we, we have this uh, as, as we want to do file of uh, G. Okay, so we print this one. And you see it's six. But if we do print as the file, we try to find Z. Z is not in there. So you will get none. You will get nothing. You get minus one. Okay, you get minus one. So this one, let's see if we have a string T equals A, B, A, B, A, 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 B, A, B, A, B. A, B, A, 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 B, 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 okay, something like that. And we do position equals T dot Y, uh, actually A, B, okay. And while uh, position actually greater than zero, greater equal to zero, we continue and we, we put position and then we do Position equals t dot i. Okay, this AB pattern. So doing this, we should find all the location for AB. Okay. Don't change that. Okay, so here this is in the same. We will end with uh, spacing. But don't change that. And at the very end, when we finish the follow, we do print and change that. Let me see one more time, okay? Oh, this one doesn't work because it actually get the same thing. Uh, this one now it going to an infinite loop. So we must break it, okay? We must break it. So it's wrong, let's do, we need to stop it, okay? We need to stop it wrong. Okay, we need to stop it wrong. Okay, keep printing out the zeros. Let's see, the wrong, we need to uh, print out, stop the wrong. Okay, let's see, stop the wrong. Stop polo, okay, stop the polo. Okay, so right here, this one doesn't work, okay. So we do need to find, uh, let's see. So that's a Python find uh, function. So Python find function, you can also put a star and end. So right here, we can put a, position plus one, okay? Then you will search starting from uh, position plus one. Then you will not you will not go into the infinite loop.
Okay, so that's the location we find for the AB pattern. Okay, that's the use of the find function and they are conversion to lowercase that we know, conversion to uppercase. Here is one strip is very important. Strip will get out of the uh, white space later. So let's assume that we have um, ST, okay, equals tab. Okay, let's do this one. Tab, 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 uh, actually AB, okay, and then change line and then CD, okay. And then tab, tab, tab. Okay, something like this, okay. Then we print out this ST, okay. So you'll be tap, tap, and then AB, and then change the line, and then print CD, and then uh, tap, tap, okay? But if we do use ST dot, okay, uh, lab strip, and then we print it. Then left side tapping is gone. Then the left side tapping will be gone, okay. Uh, I I haven't saved it, okay. Oh, I see, no, here yeah, don't put the ST here. Okay, then the left side tapping is no longer there. <clears throat> You can also remove the right side stripping. Okay, so the right side is, uh, you cannot see, but left side is not stripped out this way. But you can also do both way. It is strip. Okay, so both should have been cleaned up. Okay, so these are the strip, and you can do replace fine, right? Just right strip split. Split is very important. So split, let's assume that we have a string of token. Okay, and we do use uh, T list equals tokens. This one will be splitting by space. Okay, if you don't put anything there. Okay, and it will be split into a, a list. Okay, and conversion to uppercase, we know it. So I briefly go through these different string functions and uh, you can check the, my slice and sample code, okay? I can now, can never be complete, okay? And they are start with, end with function replace, you can also use, okay? Okay, so next one is formatted code. Okay, for medical, you had a built-in standard format of the code. You do formatting, okay? And then, uh, okay, these are the different uh, format, okay? Standard format, you have built-in standard format and you have the new format. So basically, uh, the standard format is similar to your uh, C language or Java language uh, formatting, 
okay? So you can do this, okay? So when we do print this, you get this. So it's a five space digit, five digit number, and then uh, five is the minimum wish you need to have, you can have, okay? Five is the minimum wish that you can have. And then you will print 10 with minimum five digit, and you'll be justified to the right side, okay? When you do minus, you'll be justified to the left side. And if you put a zero, that will be stuck with zero leading zeros. Plus sign would add a plus sign. And minus plus means that let's justify and with the sign, okay? And for the floating point, for a floating point, you have, uh, say, 3.2F, that means that up to decimal point, at least two more digit and totally three digit. Okay. If here you have five, that means totally five digit up to decimal point, you have two digit and then two more on the left side. Okay. So something that is 8.4, it's actually total width eight, minimum width eight. Okay. And then four digit up to decimal point and decimal point take one digit. So you have three more uh, point, three more digit on the left side, okay? But if your number is bigger, say uh, 10,000, okay, point three, four, five, six, then it will overflow, okay? You will overflow the uh, maximum width that you assign, okay? So my side is less justify, you have, 8.2, totally maximum width, a minimum width of eight, two digit up to this own point, and that justified. Okay, this is the format. In Python, we do this, okay, in Python, we do this. We do have a uh, formatted string, okay. As so soon that we have, say, percentage, we have uh, percentage D comma percentage D, okay. So this is two point, okay, a point X, Y data, okay. So we put three and four, okay. So then this three will be used to replace the first number. Four will be used to replace the second number, okay. This one is the formatted string. Okay, I'll print in this way. Let's format this string. Okay, so here I have a whole section of format this string. Please try it out. Okay, these are, these are the uh, traditional C Java like uh, format this string. And actually, uh, actually, Python has its own format this string that's actually position unrelated. Okay, so you have Python formatted string. Python formatted string is positional independent. And I did not introduce over here. Okay, but you can try, look at something like this, it's called formatted string. You have a bunch of keyword by certain format. Okay, so you do that. The zero means zero location, okay. Okay, that's a formatted string. Okay, let's try this one. You break it, break it. Okay, and that's something uh, actually you would like to, that's a formatted string. So let's try this one. Let's do string F2 equals uh, break it zero, break it one. This way, the format. Okay, this is another way you can do it. Okay, that's another way you can do it. I'm sorry, I should print one more time.
Okay, the good thing about this Prometheus string in Python way is like it's position free. So we can do this. Okay, you can do this. Okay. Okay, you do, you get using the four can be put into here, three put into here, four put into here, three put into here. So you can change the position of your parameters using the Python format. Python format is string, and this one is standard C like. On this string, okay. Then these are the formative string. Okay, so you also have Python app string. In the beginning, we do not uh, use this one. So app string, app string uh, is Python's formative string. And you have a string string. Okay, you can display the variable. So you put the name over there, you should be able to fit in the data into there. So let's try this one, this kind of formative string. So let's see, we have a name equals uh, every child, okay, age equals uh, 15 and score equals 99 okay so we do print okay f string Okay, it's for me string. In the beginning, I did not uh, introduce it because we haven't teach you a for me string, but it's a survey we do for me string in Python. Okay, something like this. Okay. Okay, that's about the for me string. Now let's look at tuple. Tuple in the C language you may use pair or you may use a tuple in C language. In Java, basically, I'm sorry, C++ language. In Java, basically, you don't have equivalent data type. So you pretty much, you need to create a new class called pair for it or called a tuple for it, okay? So tuple is a collection of data but tuple is immutable. So tuple is immutable, so it's impossible that you assign value to uh, replace one of them. No, you cannot do that. Uh, and you cannot add new element to it. No, you cannot do that. So once you form a tuple of three element, you have to only uh, operate it as a three way tuple. And if you have two elements, you have to treat it like a pair. So you cannot extend or shrink in the size of a tuple. It's somewhat a little bit like an array in Java, but uh, still not exactly the same. So now let's do this one. Let's actually look at the code. So I'll create another one called tuple. Okay, so create a tuple, you can do T1 equals uh, one and two, and you can actually print it. Okay, 
and you can print the lens of T1. So these are basic operations and we run. Uh, let's see one moment, okay. We print the T and print the lens of T1. Let me actually save it. Okay, I forget to save it. Okay, so that's the T1 and T. So here it might have one value, T2 equals single value three. Okay. But actually it's okay. Single value three is a single value. So it doesn't print you with parentheses. But how about can I do this one? Can I have a no element tuple? Uh, this one, no, you cannot. You cannot uh, create a no element tuple by empty parentheses. No, this one is not. Okay, this one usually you should use uh, this one. Okay, they probably in the newer version they change it already. Let's see. They probably don't allow. They already changed the rule in the newer version. Okay, so, so they no longer support this one. It's okay. So empty this thing. You do use uh, two parentheses. Okay, but now can you do this one? Can you do T two's uh, number zero equal four? Can you do that? T2 has only one element of three. Can we do that? No, you cannot assign it. But can you just do print T2's uh, zero element? Just use it as right-hand side value. Okay, so uh, this one is not allowed. Okay, let me actually commit it out. Okay, commit it out. Uh, let me commit this one now. <clears throat> I actually need to commit this one now. Uh, T2 is single element, so you it actually is not okay. So let me try this one. So empty string, you can do that. So uh, apparently T2 of a single uh, element, uh, T2, I did not successfully de uh, uh, actually declare it. So let me actually try this way. Try a single comma three, okay? See this one. I'm sorry, not this way. Let me, let me try this way, the other way around. Okay, and then let's do print uh, T3. So if you do T2 and then single parenthesis, you will get a single number. So you try to access it, it is not allowed. So this one, let me commit it out. <clears throat> okay, so let's see, uh, I need to print out T2 instead of T3. Sorry for that. Okay, so that's a single element. So single element uh, tuple, you just put a number, but you need to have a comma over there. So let's print the T2's uh, index zero location. Okay, so you got three. Now if I do print T1's uh, element one, Is valid, okay. But can we replace the T1's uh, element one with 10? We cannot, okay. So remember the tuples value can only be used on the right-hand side value, okay. 
no lead defensive value. You can assign a new value to a tuple, okay? But if you want to do this one, you, if you want to do this T1, you actually using T1, zero value, and then 10, something like that, okay? And let's print T1. That actually is okay. So this one is not really to update the value. This one is to redirect. T1 reference to a new tuple. Okay, so it's not really updating. You are actually creating a new tuple and assign the T1 to point it to the new tuple. Okay. Okay, so that's the idea of tuple, and tuple is immutable. That means that you cannot do this. You want to do tuple one, the append uh, 10 or 20, it actually is not allowed. Okay. You cannot expand it. You cannot uh, really. You can only use the data, okay? And but you, can you do for each x in T one greenness to do iteration uh, to iterate over over the tuple? It is actually okay. So that's the idea of the tuple. Tuple is immutable. Tuple is immutable, so you cannot assign a new value to it. You cannot make it longer. You cannot change the data. You can use it like a constant, but you can do redirect for it. So in some sense, that's another kind of the uh, update. But if you do plus sign, make it longer, this actually is not assigning to the original one. This one actually is creating a new tuple using concatenation. Okay, that is okay. You can uh, calculate the length. You can do repetition, make it longer. These are making the tuple longer. You can check the membership. Okay, these are uh, uh, valid operations. Okay, let's define a tuple and let's see, these are, so tuple sometimes is good. When we used to do swap, okay and your input is two value, output two value, and you can use it for swapping, okay? And you do GCD, you can actually uh, use the value to do GCF or GCD in this way, that would be faster, okay? And this, you can look at the sample code, okay? So multiple assignment is the advantage of using tuples. Uh, here we do show a few uh, examples. <clears throat> okay, so list. Next one, we talk about list. Uh, list and tuple and string, they can mutually uh, convert. So we, last time we talked about the possible string. They can be converted to list using this function. And that will become uh, a E C character, okay, and we can use a tuple okay and now convert to uh, a e c okay. And we can from list, we can do in join. Okay, we can do join and convert it to back to string. Let us try if tuple is okay for join. So join is not okay to use a uh, uh, tuple, but you do okay to convert it to list. 
Okay, it is okay you convert it to this and do joining, okay? Wait, string join this of one, T1. See in the zero string intense I and T1. Let me see. Let's try one more time, okay? So basically let's do list of T1, convert it to A list. Then do uh, s equals join a list okay. and bring s. Let's try this one. Okay. Mm, let's see. My T one. Let's see. Let's don't print it yet. Okay, let's don't print it yet. Let's look at the A list. So A list is like this. Okay. Oh, okay. It's numbers. It's not characters. So we cannot do join. Okay. We cannot do join. Let me try different things. Okay. Let's do tuple. Okay. Equals, uh, let's see. I'm sorry, I made a mistake, okay? Okay, you must have the character to convert it, okay? So let's open this too. Okay, so right here, let's actually minify them <clears throat> by using this one. This one, let's try one more time. Okay, by itself, you can join the tuple, okay? So joining tuple or uh, characters is okay. Okay, so that's actually conversion from tuple to, uh, to uh, string and list, okay? You can convert it to uh, different types. So now we move on to the list. Okay, now we move on to the list. So this can convert to uh, string, can convert to tuple, okay? So let's actually create a new uh, new Python file. So we may have a T1 equals one, two, three, okay? And we can make a T this one equals this of T1. Okay, then we actually can print T this one. Okay, when we print it to T list, the advantage of have this uh, T list is that T list already can do uh, multiple operations such as update and also extending the list. Okay, and we can convert it back to T2 uh, using tuple. This one we can convert to t uh, list back to tuple. We can convert them back. Okay, so that's advantage. These are the conversion between this and tuple. And if you want to convert it to string, of course, the data type must be character type. Okay. And that that's about tuple and the uh, uh, list. Okay, and that portion is okay. And list also have the slicing. So let's try slicing. So let's do this one. We have A of what? One, two, three. Uh, one, three, five, seven, uh, nine, 11, 13, 15. Uh, actually, uh, 17 and 19, 21. Okay, this is okay. So, print okay, A of column, column minus one. And we got a reverse of the list. 
Okay, so the slicing is the same as your strings notation. Okay, that's good. We already introduced the uh, slice slicing for string. So here I do not repeat. Okay, so basically uh, this is somewhat like a string and string is collection of characters and this is collection of data. Okay, that's the advantage of having string and string, uh, I'm sorry, list. And this that you can do increase the size using a pen. Okay, using a pen, so that's a pen 23. It will it will be a pen to the end. Okay. Okay, so this uh key point right here is. You have a dish as soon that we have a dish of one, two, three. Okay. So if you add a new data at the end, we use a pen. So we can append 40. We can do remove. Okay. Remove actually, uh, you will get uh, using pop. Pop would be the last one. You can also do remove. Okay. You get the last one. If you want to put in the head in this side, you need to use uh, insert, okay, zero with the data, okay. And then if you want to get the data from here, uh, let's see, this one actually, wait, I may have made a mistake. This one maybe is named remove, okay, I'm sorry. So remove is on the last side. Okay, and as you can see, it's actually is a DQ. It actually is a double entity queue. Okay, so it can be used for stack and queue. So let's look at the operations. The operations, uh, these are not the function. Let's look at the functions. So the functions do, do have the remove. Okay, so remove is remove the first occurrence. So, so that actually is the function. So let's try this one. Let's try have. A is to equals uh, one, two, three. Okay. So let's do a pen. A pen is adding to the tail. A pen is adding to the tail. Okay. So let's do uh, A dot a pen four and let's put A. And let's do a dot uh, pop. Okay, and let's print a. Okay, so and then let's do a dot insert zero was zero. Zero first zero is index, second zero is data. Let's print a. And we do a dot remove. And we print a again. So as you can see, uh, it, it is a double uh, NDQ, DQ, okay. It is a double NDQ, okay. So you do a pen, you got a one, two, three, four. You do pop out, you have one, two, three only. You can insert zero at the top, okay. And remove, okay, I'm sorry, remove, you need to have one index. So let's put remove zero. Okay, so remove little the zero thing together. So basically, what I should say is that let me refine my map. Okay, so right here you do need to put a index of zero in there. So actually, you can insert at uh, index one location. Okay, or actually you can remove the index one element. Okay, let's try that. Let's try that. Okay, so right here, let's try a the insert one is one point five. Okay. Okay, so insert remove actually uh, you can insert and remove at a specific location if you know about the index. Okay, okay. 
Oh, it actually remove one. Oh, okay, you will remove the data one. Okay, you will remove the data one. It's not really uh, it remove is remove object if you uh do remove. So this one, if we want to re delete a certain element, let's try to do uh this one. Let's try to do delete. Okay, try to delete one. Not trying to to remove. Okay, no, I don't. I cannot do remove. Let me try to look at it. Okay, the function. So you have the remove. Okay, it's actually called pop. I'm sorry. So pop is popping now the index one location. Okay, so pop is popping now index one location. So let's redraw the map one more time. So your data is actually one, two, three, okay? So you do a pen, a pen will append to the, uh, this uh, tail side, okay? Pop in, you can pop in without uh, index, you pop out the last one, and you can pop out any specific uh, index location. You can do remove, and default remove is remove the, the head, okay? And you can also remove Remove it with object value, okay? And you can do insert, insert. I'm sorry. Insert with index location with value, okay? And you can also insert to uh, any specific location. Okay, so that's the map. How you maintain your uh, list. Okay, that's how you maintain your list. Let's go through the slices, okay? So usually the list is a little bit like array, but array you cannot expand or you cannot delete something like a list. Okay, so this in some way is more principle compared to the Java array, okay. And suppose the sequence store in available S and we can write a loop, go through in it, okay. So that's called similar to array, okay. And you can access each data by the indexing, okay. And array are homogeneous. So the data types the same. This is not, this can accept any value. So this in Python is equivalent to Java scripts array, okay? This uh, array, uh, this is actually equivalent to Java script, Java scripts array, okay? It can be histologenous. So you set a multiple uh, data type. Um, the array, no, you cannot, okay. So actually these are dynamic. So somewhat the Python list, even more powerful than Java's array list, okay. Array list, you still need to have the same data type, okay, but here we don't, okay, and you can uh, modify it, and it actually can work like a double ending queue. Sometimes we call it DQ, okay, DQ, double ending queue. So we can add the data and delete the data in both end, okay, you can add the data in, in both end. Uh, next one, let's do comprehension list, okay? So comprehension list, we can create a alphabet, okay? Alphabet, okay, uh, let's create this one. It is actually equal to each character, okay? For uh, this one, uh, character in, okay, range, of 65 to 91, okay, this is, these are the obstacle. So this one, that's actually called it order. So order, and the order 
we actually convert it to character. Okay. So that <clears throat> will be a list of the characters. Uh, I'm sorry, OR is a, it actually is a reserve word, so we cannot use it. So let's do this one. So let's print our alphabet. Okay, this is called comprehension list. Okay, this is called comprehension list. <clears throat> so you can create a list based on this statement, okay? <clears throat> For all of the KOR ranging from 65 to 91, but not including 91. So it's a 65 to 90, 90. Okay, that's actually it's ASCII code. Okay, ASCII code. Uh, the ASCII code we convert to character. So let's print this one. And then we do A string. It is actually using this one that uh, join, join the alphabet. Okay, and then we print out our A string. Okay, and that's wrong. Okay, so that's the uh, the, the list of the these. Okay, so uh, comprehension list is very robust. Okay, you can use this to create uh, many of them. Uh, that's very powerful. Let's try this one. Let's try uh, A equals uh, one, two, three. Okay. B equals uh, four, five, six. Okay. And let's do C equals A plus B. This one is the concatenation of two list. Okay. This is concatenation of two list. Okay, so that's a concatenation of this. So how can we use this one efficiently? So we may have a, a list called, uh, uh, let's do it this way, let's do a list equals NT. Okay, so for S in, uh, for S in a range okay, 10, Let's print the X, okay, let's print X. So we print each X. Okay, now let's assume that we are going to 18 X into my A list. So we have two ways we can do it. One way is like we can do, let's commit it out. Okay, we can do A list that append. Append what? Append your append your x, okay. And at the very end, we do print now my a list, okay. And in this way, you get zero to nine, okay. And that's one way you can append it. The other way is let's do this one. Let's do using plus sign. So we say A plus equal is using appending. Okay, it's appending. But you must uh, actually concatenation. Concatenation, but you do need to concatenate with a list. So this doesn't work. You cannot do this. Uh, this doesn't work. Oh, actually it works. Actually it works. Okay, let, let me see. I may not have saved it. Let me. Save it, okay, let me save it. Try one more time, and it's not okay. It's not okay, you do uh, concatenation. So concatenation happen only between two list. So you create this for X and you can do concatenation to it. Let's see, actually you have an X. Oh, okay, this one is A list, okay. Let's try it one more time, okay? Let's try it one more time. Okay, so you got it, okay? So remember, you can only do uh, concatenation and you try to, you try to add it to it, 
uh, is not iterable, okay? You must put a list for concatenation, okay? So plus equal is concatenation in list, okay? And append, otherwise you single element, you need to do append, okay? You need to do append. So that's the operation of the list, okay? So that we finish that. Okay, so here basic operation, uh, sequence plus sequence, you get contamination. This happened to this and tuple, okay? And you can do repetition. So you can do repetition such as, okay, let's do this one. That actually have ARY equals zero. Time twenty, okay, uh, and then we do this one for actually i in range of a r y, okay. So this one is somewhat like uh, in Java you do uh, integer array a r y equals new integer twenty element of them, okay. It's similar to that, okay, and we do a r y of the i's value equals, uh, no, this one should be the length of it, okay. And then we get assigned to i, okay, and we prove in a r y, okay. Okay, so it can be updated but if we uh, actually do this one, we do get ARY that should be filled with zero. So this one is the way you declare a list of 20 elements with all zeros, okay? With all zeros. Let's go back. Okay, that one is a repetition. And indexing the slicing is same as string, so it's easier. Okay, and you can also check the membership. Okay, those portion is okay. Okay, and you can do a pen, you can do sorting. And remember this sorting is destructive sorting. Okay, it is a destructive sorting. Okay, so let's try to use this sort. Okay, so let's assume that we have a data of uh, S equals uh, five, two, six, four, one. Okay, let's do this one. And S does sort. Okay, and we print our S. It is sorting this S, okay. And we get, uh, we haven't saved it, okay. I'm sorry, I should print S, okay, not A. Okay, so you get this one, okay. It got sorted, but it's destructive. So your S already been changed. If you don't want to change it, okay, let's try this one. T equals the same one. Phi, phi two, four, a six, four, one. You can do, T2, okay, equals solid, sorted of your T, okay. And that's growing your T2 and growing your T1, okay. So T2 is a new list. Oh, okay, this one is actually T, okay, T. Sorry, I forget that I already used the T and T2. Okay, so T remain unsorted, okay. So this one is non-destructive sorting. It will sort and create a new list instead of overwriting your original list, okay. So that's the sorting and the sorting we can use lambda expression to do sorting. For example, uh, uh, we, we just look at it, okay? So if we want to 
uh, this one actually is ascending uh, sorting. So if we want to do this one, we can do uh, this one, that's the S, okay. And let's do S dot sort, okay. We can do order, uh, we can do reverse, okay, go through. Okay, and we'll print S. Okay, so the result will be reverse order. Okay, it will be reverse order. Okay, so that if you want to uh, do reverse order. And here we may also have some list that had uh, three, one, okay, two, four, okay, ten, two, okay, uh, one, nine. For example, we have a list of uh, points. We have these of points. So we can basically do this one. Let's do P1 equals a solid, okay, a points, okay. We do use a key and key, we do lambda X, okay. And lambda is getting each tuple from the point. And we are going to use the tuple zero for sorting. Okay, so we use that as my uh, function. So this one will be comparing based on T0. So that's the X, X coordinates value for it. Okay, so then we do that. And we can also create a P2. This is also sorted okay, using the point to sort. And then our, lambda, our key equals a lambda expression. Okay, of the P and then we use T1 to do sorting. Okay, let's bring our P1 and the P2. So we go import sorted by S. And sort it by y. Okay. Okay. So sort it by x, x in ascending order. Sort it by y, y in ascending order. Okay. Okay. So that's a sorting, and you can find out the index of the first occurrence, so this is somewhat like a find, okay? Somewhat like a find in string. So the name mm, is a little bit uh, not, not really uh, user-friendly over here, okay? And you do have to insert the count, count is similar, okay? Now we already explained it. Okay, so these are the basic, these operations. Okay, and you can convert a numpy array to list and also this to numpy array. Okay, the advantage of using the array is the numpy array actually is array. So it's actually faster than list. Okay, so you can do this one. You can do um, this one. Let's try this one. We have, we do have a T equal this. So we do T array equals numpy dot array. Okay, and then put T in there. Okay, so numpy, we don't have numpy. So let's actually do import numpy as mp. Okay, and if you don't know how to install the numpy, uh, we do have a video. We do have a video uh, in the class. Okay, we do have a video, I'm sorry. Uh, right here, let me actually log in again. It has been a while. So look into your account and in here, star here, 
we do have a installation for numerical package. So NumP, SciP, and MapProLab is all in there, okay? It's all in there. So that's the NumP. So we can take care of NumP because uh, Python doesn't have array, but sometimes you do need to use the array. So use uh, this to create an array. An array is faster than, uh, than list. You can you can actually think about it in this way. Uh, this one is actually convert the array list to array, okay, in Java, okay, similar to that. Okay. And array is faster, okay, array is faster. Okay, array is faster. Let's see, sort it, okay, so it become this, okay, it become this. Uh, and it is also ND array, okay, so let's try ND array. So we can do this one, okay, we do one, two, okay. So we do this one, three, four, okay. And we put it into a matrix and this one is two-dimensional array, okay? Two-dimensional array, we call it matrix, okay? And we do M1 equals numP dot arrays of the M, and we do point M1, okay? So that become a matrix, okay? It's not this of this anymore. It actually is become a two-dimensional uh, array. Okay, and you can also use ND array, ND array, okay, N dimensional array. You can also do that, okay. And later we'll talk about NumP array. Okay, later we'll talk about NumP array. At this moment, uh, object cannot be interpreted as an uh, integer, okay. So your M is not, okay. So let's do this, okay. We will do ND array later, okay. We'll do ND array later. Okay, anyway, these are the conversion of these two NumP array, okay? And we'll talk about NumP array later. Later in later part of the chapter, we do have the NumP array, okay? We are going to do that later. So at this moment, just know about it is convertible, okay? To NumP array, that's it. Comprehension list, we already explained it, okay? So here you can have such a tokens, and then you uh, actually do join it into a string, okay? Uh, let's see, you have A, okay? So you create each word and you from each word you get the first letters, okay? Get the first letter and you join them and print it into a string, okay? And that's that. So let's copy, uh, let's open this, uh, this file. Okay, let's open this, this file as an example. Uh, lecture two, let's open the this file. So this file, we actually pick every first character from the words, okay, and we join in the pointers, okay. And second one, we actually find every words Okay, and we join it, uh, this is the same operation. And we can also find each last word and join them. Okay, and we each middle word to join them. So that's the use of the comprehension list. Okay, so first one, every first letter, I am a G S F W H S. Okay, and second one, the same. Okay, second one is it. So one's last character, so it should be uh, I M A D T. Okay, I M A D T. Okay, middle one, middle one. You do uh, words length divided by two, so it is it, I and then M and then A and then this O. I think uh, divided by two is this one, and then divided by two. I think this one got D. Okay, this one got O. This one got N, this one got 
G is a gut. Oh, okay. So that's the least. That's the least. Okay. That's the least operation. Sorry. So next one, let's look at the set. Okay, let's look at set. Set is similar to tuple or list, okay? But it is similar to tuple, but it's non-recurring, okay? You can add element to it, but it actually is non-recurring. So set uh, can only have uh, distinct data, okay? And you, if you know about set, you can check the membership, whether they are, the data is in there or not, the length of the set, okay? And you can use the less than equal to to check the subset, okay? Greater equal to to check the superset, okay? And then you have union, intersection, and difference, and also uh, difference, okay? And then you have copy, okay? So that's a set, okay, that's a set. So let's look at this one. Uh, to add a data into it, you can use union. Okay, you can use union. So let's see here. Okay, let's create a new <clears throat> file for set one. Okay, so here let's do this one. We have a set, and this one let's have an empty set. Okay, so this empty set. Now I'm going to add data to it. So we use a plus equals uh, one. Okay, then let me put in my s. Okay. Okay, so plus equal not allow. Okay, plus equal not allow. So how could we uh, add a element to it? So how about let me do a pen. So a pen. A pen is also now okay. How about we use the word add? And it's also now, okay. How about we do insert? Okay, so this is not convenient, okay. So in fact, this one, if we really want to do the editing, we probably still want to uh, put it into uh, a S list. Okay, come on to this one. And then we do as list, okay. And then we do uh, a pen, okay, with one. And then we do convert it back to s equal as list, okay. And we convert it back to set. But this actually is tedious, okay. This one is tedious. So to add a new member by this actually is tedious and slow. Okay, TDS and so it doesn't make sense. Okay, it doesn't make sense. So we, uh, let's keep it this way. Okay, let's keep it this way. So here, let's actually do the following thing. So let's define a function called add, okay, the set and a value. Okay, we would like to add a value into the set. So we do this one, we create a S, okay, and we do a union, okay, union of the set of the value. Okay, and we return our set, okay. Okay, so let's see this one. Okay, let's do this one. So here we have set, okay. So let's do set that, uh, let's do add this set with uh, one. Let's do this one with two, okay. And let's print this, okay. Okay, it adding in the two, okay. It adding in the two. But how about actually remove, okay. Okay, if we want to do remove, then we do S uh, actually minus equal. We, we, this one actually is using union. 
This one which is using the so-called difference. Okay, it's using sub difference. Okay, so only the element two got kept. Okay, only the element two got kept. Okay. So these are the operation for set. Okay, uh, you can cover it back to this to do operation, but that would take longer time. So try to use union and the difference that to use to for adding and subtraction. Okay. And we also have intersection, okay, and set difference, and also superset subset operations, okay. D four one you can look into the example code, okay. D four one you can look in into the default, uh, example code. Next one, I'm going to cover the dictionary. So dictionary, I would like to go through the slices because some student might not be. Uh, comfortable about dictionary. So dictionary, this allow us to store and retrieve item from sequential collection. So it's element by element, okay? But sometimes we do want to use a key value pair, okay? Key value pair in uh, Java, it is so-called uh, map, okay? Or hash map. So in a way that a dictionary is also very efficient because hash map, the, the so-called uh, complexity is order one when you access it, it's using H code. So it's very efficient, okay? It may even be faster than your linear search in a list, okay? Because it's using the H code. Okay, anyway, so here we can call it a mapping, okay? And it's associate array, okay? And you have a password, okay? Kaido Supercomputer, okay? Turing Genius, Bio uh, Mono Monopoly. So this one is the name, and this is the definition of the name, okay? So that is the key value pair, key value pair. Remember, it's separated by column, okay? And, and uh, okay, and the next side usually is using string, okay? So you need to use double quote, double quote for the key, okay? So it's uh, hatching the string to some hash code, okay? So you can do dictionary key to access the data, okay? Access the data, okay? And that's the dictionary basic, okay? So right here, what we would like to do is, okay, before we go further, let's actually look at this one. When are we going to use a uh, dictionary? So let me call it object one. Uh, dictionary actually is the object in uh, JavaScript. So we have a student one, okay, let's actually have a student one. And the student one may have the name. And this name is, let's call it Eric Chow, okay. Then age, let's try to use 15, okay. And then four, let's have 20, uh, 99, okay. So this is a student and I put in, and I actually do put in a student one, okay. And that's wrong, okay. Okay, now let's actually do this one. Let's do student ones. Uh, actually, this one, let me put mass okay, equals 88. So let's pull in student one. Okay. 
So this one is to add um, it up here. Okay, so it's somewhat like uh, the object in uh, JavaScript, okay? And you can create an add, uh, element at any time. So let's create another one called student two, okay? And you use a dictionary. Okay, and you do print my student two. So my student two at this moment, it will be empty. Okay, it will be empty. So now let's do this one. Let's do student tools. So it's called Arial. Okay, Arial. And then student tools page equals 16. Student two. Or of course, uh, seventy six. You can choose mass, of course, forty four, whatever. So you can create a dictionary first and then add data field later. Okay, or you can create the student by the listing of key value pair. Okay, either way should be fine. Okay, so let me print it this way. Okay, okay. That's that. One more. Okay, so we actually create a second student. Okay, and sometimes you can also use uh, student. Three equal default dictionary. Okay. Now, what's the difference between default dictionary and dictionary? And this one is to default additional. Oh, let me see. Let me see. One moment. Okay. Let's actually do I some default dictionary. Okay, T4 tick. Okay, it's called T4 tick. So how can we use that? It actually is dictionary like that, okay? And we have default dictionary. So default dictionary, oh, you need to, uh, from collections, uh, import default dictionary, okay? And that's that, okay, let's see. So default dictionary, what's the purpose of default dictionary? So right here, okay, default dictionary. Python use an order collection. Okay, we use that, okay. Unlike the data type, so it actually is key value pair. Okay, this means a tuple can be uh, a key, okay. Okay, whatever, as dictionary. And default collection data presenting collections and default dictionary is a class of dictionary, return dictionary like object. The functionality of both dictionary default are almost the same. It set up default dictionary never raise key key error. Okay, so it never key. Even if you miss it, it won't raise a key error. Okay. Okay, so that actually has some advantage. Okay. So here we do need to do on collections. Import uh, default. Okay. So do, do. Okay. So right here, let's try student three equals student three uh, equals. 
Boys uh, Ryan Sweden series age let's try 17 okay Sweden series or the course 100 okay so let's try to, to do this one let's point student three let's try to get the mess okay get a mess from d4 dig okay Cannot import the default dictionary. Let's see one more time, okay? Ah, oh, it's lowercase. Okay, that's not uppercase. Sorry for that. This is lowercase. Okay, so it's lowercase. I just wonder. I never see capital classes. Key error, okay, so mass is not in there. This one, no. So it's still reporting the key error. Okay, so D for D still reporting the key error. Uh, this one actually is not what it said, okay, let's see. It's not the same as what it say over here, okay. Okay, this one I still need to check, okay. Why are we using default tick? But some people prefer default tick, okay. This one I am not 100% sure. But my original impression is it will give us some default value, okay. Okay, that's actually the dictionary. Let me comment this one now, okay. And right now we can do for loop, okay, so try this one, okay. So for uh, key value in students, student one, okay. So put in your key, okay? So this for loop actually is getting key, okay? This for loop is getting key, let's try a different one. Let's try for tuple in students and items. Okay, so the tuples with uh, it will create the student uh, key value pair tuple, okay? Key value pair tuple, okay? Okay, and next one we can do for key in student find the keys, okay? This one's still key, okay, this one's still key. And we can also do for the value in student quantum values. Okay, and this one we get value, okay? So remember dictionary, you have several way to do traversal, several way to do traversal, okay? And you must know which way you actually prefer. You must know which way you prefer, okay? The traversal, you have several ways you can do it. Okay, so that's that. Hmm. Okay, so that's about the dictionary. So key here is the operation. You can check if a key in the dictionary or not. 
you can create a sequence of a key that would be a list and also sequence of values. And you can also uh, create sequence of tuples, okay? And you can delete a certain element by deleting the, um, the, the, uh, the dictionary with certain key. And you can do clear, clear or clear every uh, element, okay? And you can use a get key and uh, default, okay? Uh, that's the do. Uh, actually uh, get value. But this one, I still don't think it's actually a good idea to do that, okay? You can get tuple or you can get a key, okay? That actually uh, would be easier. Okay, so this portion is our uh, dictionary, okay? Now let's look at tuple. Tuple in the C language, you may use pair, or you may use a tuple in C language. In Java, basically, I'm sorry, C double plus language. In Java, basically, you don't have equivalent data type. So you pretty much, you need to create a new class called pair for it, or called a tuple for it, okay? So tuple is a collection of data, but tuple is immutable. So tuple is immutable, so it's impossible that you assign value to uh, replace one of them. No, you cannot do that. Uh, and you cannot add new element to it. No, you cannot do that. So once you form a tuple of three element, you have to only uh, operate it as a three-way tuple. And if you have two elements, you have to treat it like a pair. So you cannot extend or shrink in the size of a tuple. It's somewhat a little bit like an array in Java, but uh, still not exactly the same. So now let's do this one. Let's actually look at the call. So I'll create another one called tuple. Okay, so create a tuple, you can do T1 equals uh, one and two and you can actually print it, okay? And you can print the length of T1. So these are basic operations and we run. Uh, let's see, one moment, okay? We print the T and print the length of T1. Let me actually save it. Okay, I forget to save it. Okay, so that's the T1 and T. So here, if I have one value, T2 equals single value three. Okay. But actually it's okay. Single value three is a single value. So it doesn't print you with parentheses. But how about, can I do this one? Can I have a no element tuple. Uh, this one, no, you cannot, you cannot uh, create a no element tuple by empty parentheses. No, this one is not. Okay, this one usually you should use uh, this one. Okay, they probably in the newer version, they change it already. Let's see, they probably don't allow, they already changed the rule in the newer version. Okay, so, so they no longer support this one. It's okay, so empty this thing, you do use uh, two parentheses. Okay, but now can you do this one? Can you do T2's uh, number zero? equal four, can you do that? T2 has only one element of three. Can we do that? No, you cannot assign it. But can you just do print T2's uh, zero element? Just use it as right-hand side value.
Okay, so uh, this one is not allowed. Okay, let me actually commit it out. Okay, commit it out. Uh, let me comment this one now. <clears throat> I actually need to comment this one now. <clears throat> uh, T2 is single element, so you it actually is not okay. So let me try this one. So empty string, you can do that. So. Uh, apparently, T2 of a single uh, element, uh, T2, I did not successfully de uh, uh, actually declare it. So let me actually try this way. Try a single comma three, okay? See this one. I'm sorry, not this way. Let me, let me try this way, the other way around. Okay, and then let's do print uh, T3. So if you do T2 and then single parenthesis, you will get a single number. So you try to access it, it is not allowed. So this one, let me commit it out. <clears throat> okay. So let's see, uh, I need to print out T2 instead of T3. Sorry for that. Okay. So that's a single element. So single element, uh, tuple, you just put a number, but you need to have a comma over there. So let's print the T2's uh, index zero location. Okay, so you got three. Now, if I do print T1's uh, element one. Is valid, okay. But can we replace the T1's uh, element one with 10? We cannot, okay. So remember the top post value can only be used on the right hand side value, okay. No left hand side value. You can assign a uh, new value to a uh, tuple, okay? But if you want to do this one, you, if you want to do this T1, you actually using t one's zero value and then 10, something like that, okay? And let's print T1. That actually is okay. So this one is not really to update the value. This one is to redirect T1 reference to a new tuple. Okay, so it's not really updating. You are actually creating a new tuple and assign the T1 to point it to the new tuple, okay? Okay, so that's the idea of tuple and tuple is immutable. That means that you cannot do this. You want to do tuple one, the append uh, 10 or 20, it actually is not allowed, okay? You cannot expand it. You cannot, uh, really, you can only use the data, okay? And, but you, can you do for each X in T1, pre to do iteration, uh, to iterate, all over the tuple, it is actually okay. So that's the idea of the tuple. Tuple is immutable. Tuple is immutable, so you cannot assign a new value to it. You cannot make it longer. You cannot change the data. You can use it like a constant, but you can do redirect for it. So in some sense, that's another kind of the uh, update. But if you do plus sign, make it longer, this actually is not assigning to the original one. This one actually is creating a new tuple using concatenation. 
Okay, that is okay. You can uh, calculate the length. You can do repetition, make it longer. These are making the tuple longer. You can check the membership. Okay, these are uh, uh, valid operations. Okay, let's define a tuple and let's see, these are, so tuple sometimes is good. We used to do swap, okay? And your input is two value, output two value, and you can use it for swapping, okay? And you do GCD, you can actually uh, use the value to do GCF or GCD. In this way, that would be faster, okay? And this, you can look at the sample code, okay? So multiple assignment is the advantage of using tuples. Uh, here we do show a few uh, examples. <clears throat> okay, so list. Next one we talk about list. Uh, list and tuple and string they can mutually uh, convert. So we, last time we talk about the possible string. They can be converted to list using this function, and that will become uh, a. E C character, okay, and we can use a tuple. Okay. And now convert to uh, A E C, okay. And we can from list, we can do in join. Okay, we can do join and convert it to back to string. Let us try if tuple is okay for join. So join is not okay to use a uh, uh, tuple, but you do okay to convert it to list. Okay, it is okay you convert it to list and do joining, okay. Wait, string join list of one, T1. See in the zero string intens I and T1. Let me see, let's try one more time, okay? So basically let's do list of T1, convert it to A list, okay? And then do uh, S equals join A list, okay? And join S, let's try this one. Okay. Mm, let's see. My T1, let's see. Let's don't print it yet. Okay, let's don't print it yet. Let's look at the A list. So A list is like this, okay. Oh, okay, it's numbers, it's not characters. So we cannot do join, okay, we cannot do join. Let me try different things, okay. Let's do tuple, okay, equals, uh, let's see. I'm sorry, I made a mistake, okay. Okay, you must have the character to convert it, okay. So let's open this two. Okay, so right here, let's actually minify them <clears throat> by using this one. So this one, let's try one more time. Okay, by itself, you can join the tuple, okay? So Joining tuple or 
uh, filters is okay. Okay, so that's actually conversion from tuple to uh, to uh, string and list. Okay, you can convert it to uh, different types. So now we move on to the list. Okay, now we move on to the list. So this can convert to uh, string, can convert to tuple. Okay, so let's actually create a new uh, new Python file. So we may have a T one equals one, two, three, okay? And we can make it T, this one, equals this of T1, okay? Then we actually can print T, this one. Okay, when we print it to T list, the advantage of have this uh, T list is that T list already can do, uh, mutable operations such as update and also extending the list, okay? And we can convert it back to T2 uh, using tuple. This one, we can convert to T uh, list back to tuple. We can convert them back. Okay, so that's advantage. These are the conversion between this and tuple. And if you want to convert it to string, of course, the data type must be character type. Okay, and that that's about tuple and uh, uh, list. Okay, and that portion is okay. And list also have the slicing. So let's try slicing. So let's do this one. We have a of what. One, two, three. Uh, one, three, five, seven, uh, nine, eleven, thirteen, fifteen, uh, actually, uh, seventeen and nineteen, twenty one. Okay, this is okay. So, print okay, A of column, column minus one. And we got the reverse of the list. Okay, so the slicing is the same as your strings notation. Okay, that's good. We already introduced the uh, slice slicing for string. So here I do not repeat. Okay, so basically, uh, list is somewhat like a string, and string is collection of characters, and this is collection of data. Okay, that's the advantage of having string and string. Uh, I'm sorry, list. And this that you can do increase the size using a pen. Okay, using a pen. So that's a pen 23. It will it will be a pen to the end. Okay. Okay, so this uh key point right here is. You have a dish as soon that we have a dish of one, two, three. Okay. So if you add a new data at the end, we use a pen. So we can append 40. We can do remove. Okay. Remove actually, uh, you will get uh, using pop. Pop will be the middle last one. You can also do remove. Okay. You'll get the last one. If you want to put in the head in this side, you need to use uh, insert, okay, zero with the data, okay. And then if you want to get the data from here, uh, let's see, this one actually, wait, I may have made a mistake. This one maybe is named remove, okay, I'm sorry. So remove is on the last side. Okay, and as you can see, it's actually is a DQ. It actually is a double entity queue. Okay, so it can be used for stack and queue. So let's look at the operations. The operations, uh, these are not a function. Let's look at the functions. So the functions do, do have the remove. Okay, so remove is remove the first occurrence. So, so that actually is the function. So let's try this one. Let's try have 
a list equals uh, one, two, three. Okay, so let's do a pen. A pen is adding to the tail. A pen is adding to the tail. Okay. So let's do uh, a dot a pen four and let's put in a and let's do a dot uh, pop okay and let's print a okay so and then let's do a dot insert zero was zero you know first zero is index second zero is data let's print a and we do a dot remove Print A again. So as you can see, uh, a, it is a double uh, anti DQ, DQ, okay. It is a double anti -Q, okay. So you do a pen, you got a one, two, three, four. You do pop out, you have one, two, three only. You can insert zero at the top, okay. And remove, okay, I'm sorry, remove, you need to have one index. So let's put remove zero. Okay, so remove zero, the zero can kill out. So basically what I should say is that, let me refine my map. Okay, so right here, you do need to put a index of zero in there. So actually you can insert at uh, index one location. Okay, or actually you can remove the index one element. Okay, let's try that. Let's try that. Okay, so right here, let's try a the insert one with 1.5, okay. And so insert remove actually uh, you can insert and remove at a specific location if you know about the index. Okay, okay. Oh, it actually remove one. Oh, okay, you will remove the data one. Okay, you will remove the data one. It's not really uh, it remove is remove object if you uh, do remove. So this one if we want to re delete a certain element, let's try to do. Uh, this one is try to do delete. Okay, try to delete one. Not trying to do remove. Okay, no, I don't. Uh, you cannot do remove. Let me try to look at it. Okay, the function. So you have the remove. Okay, it's actually called pop. I'm sorry. So pop is popping now the index one location. Okay, so pop is popping up in this one location. So let's redraw the map one more time. So your data is actually one, two, three. Okay, so you do a pen, a pen will append to the uh, this uh, tail side. Okay, pop in, you can pop in without uh, index, you pop out the last one, and you can pop out any specific uh, index location. You can do remove and default remove is remove the, the head, okay? And you can also remove remove it with object value, okay? And you can do insert, insert. I'm sorry. Insert with index location with value, okay? And you can also insert to uh, any specific location. Okay, so that's the map. How you maintain your uh, list. Okay, that's how you maintain your list. Let's go through the slices, okay? So usually the list is a little bit like array, but array you cannot expand or you cannot delete something like a list. Okay, so this in some way is more 
traceable compared to the Java array, okay? And suppose the sequence store in available S and we can write a loop go through in it, okay? So that's called similar to array, okay? And you can access each data by the indexing, okay? An array are homogeneous, so the data type is the same. This is not, this can accept any value. So this in Python is equivalent to JavaScript's array, okay? This uh, array, uh, this is actually equivalent to JavaScript. JavaScript array, okay. It can be histologeneous. So you set a multiple uh, data type. And the array, no, you cannot, okay. So actually these are dynamic. So somewhat the Python list even more powerful than Java's array list, okay. A radius, you still need to have the same data type, okay? But here we don't, okay? And you can uh, modify it, and it actually can work like a double ending queue. Sometimes we call it DQ, okay? DQ, double ending queue. So we can add the data and delete the data in both ends, okay? You can add the data and in both ends. Uh, this one, let's do comprehension list, okay? So comprehension list, we can create a alphabet, okay? Alphabet, okay, uh, let's create this one. It is actually equal to each character, okay? For uh, this one, uh, character in, okay, range, of 65 to 91, okay, this is, these are the obstacle. So this one does actually call it order. So order and the order, we actually convert it to character. Okay, so that <clears throat> would be a list of the characters. Uh, I'm sorry, OR is a, it actually is a reserve word, so we cannot use it. Let's do this one. So let's print our alphabet. Okay, this is called comprehension list. Okay, this is called comprehension list. <clears throat> so you can create a list based on this statement, okay? <clears throat> For all of the KOR ranging from 65 to 91, but not including 91. So it's a 65 to 90. 90, okay, that's actually, it's ASCII code, okay, ASCII code. Uh, the ASCII code, we convert to character, so let's print this one, and then we do A string. It is actually using this one that uh, join, join the alphabet, okay, and then we print out our A string. Okay, and that's wrong. Okay, so that's the uh, the, the list of the these. Okay, so uh, comprehension list is very robust. Okay, you can use this to create uh, many of them. Uh, that's very powerful. Let's try this one. Let's try uh, a equals uh, one, two, three. Okay. B equals uh, four, five, six. Okay, and let's do C equals A plus B. This one is the concatenation of two list. Okay, this is concatenation of two list. Okay, so that's a concatenation of this list. So how can we use this one effic uh, efficiently? So we may have a, uh, 
uh, list for uh, let's do it this way. Let's do a list equals mt. Okay. So for s in uh, for s in a range okay, ten. Let's print the x. Okay, let's print x. So we print each x. Okay, now let's assume that we are going to 18x into my A list. So we have two ways we can do it. One way is like we can do, let's comment it out. Okay, we can do A list that append. Okay, append what? Append your, append your X. Okay, and at the very end, we do print now my A list. And in this way, you get zero to nine, okay? And that's one way you can append it. The other way is let's do this one. Let's do using plus sign. So we say A plus equal is using appending, okay? It's appending, but you must uh, actually concatenation, concatenation, but you do need to concatenate with a list. So this doesn't work. You cannot do this. Uh, this doesn't work. Oh, actually it works. It works. Okay, let, let me see. I may not have saved it. Let me save it. Okay, let me save it. Try one more time. And it's not okay. It's not okay. You do uh, concatenation. So concatenation happen only between two lists. So you create this for X and you can do concatenation to it. Let's see, actually you have an X. Oh, okay. This one is A list. Okay. Let's try one more time. Okay. Let's try one more time. Okay. So you got it. Okay. So remember, you can only do uh, concatenation. And you try to, you try to add it to it. Uh, it's not iterable, okay? You must put a list for concatenation, okay? So plus equal is concatenation in list, okay? And append, otherwise you single element, you need to do append, okay? You need to do append. So that's the operation of the list, okay? So that we finish that, okay? So here, basic operation, uh, sequence plus sequence, you get contamination. This happened to this and tuple, okay? And you can do repetition. So you can do repetition such as, okay, let's do this one. That actually have ARY equals zero. Time 20, okay. Uh, and then we do this one for actually i in range of ary, okay. So this one is somewhat like uh, in Java, you do uh, integer array uh, ary equals new integer 20 element of them, okay. It's similar to that, okay. And we do ary or the i's value equals, uh, no, this one should be the length of it, okay. And then we get assign to i, okay, and we print, okay, we print uh, a r y, okay. Okay, so it can be updated but if we uh, actually do this one, we do get ARY that should be filled with zero. So this one is the way you declare a list of 20 elements with all zeros, okay, with all zeros. Let's go back. Okay, that one is a repetition. 
And indexing the slicing is same as string, so it's easier, okay? And you can also check the membership, okay? Those portion is okay. Okay, and you can do a pen, you can do sorting. And remember this sorting is destructive sorting. Okay, it is a destructive sorting. Okay, so let's try to use this sort. Okay, so let's assume that we have a data of uh, S equals uh, Y two C four one. Okay, let's do this one. And S does sort. Okay, and we print our S. It is sorting this S, okay? And we get, uh, we haven't saved it, okay? I'm sorry, I should print S, okay, not A. Okay, so you get this one, okay? It got sorted. But it's destructive, so your S already been changed. If you don't want to change it, Okay, let's try this one. T equals the same one. Five, five, two, four, a six, four, one. You can do T two. Okay, equals solid, solid of your T. Okay, and let's going your T two and going your T one. Okay, so T two is a new list. Oh, okay, this one is actually T, okay, T. Sorry, I forget that I already used the T and T2. Okay, so T remain unsorted, okay. So this one is non-destructive sorting. You will sort and create a new list instead of overwriting your original list, okay. So that's the sorting and the sorting we can use lambda expression to do sorting. For example, uh, uh, we, we let's look at it, okay? So if we want to, uh, this one actually is ascending uh, sorting. So if we want to do this one, we can do uh, this one, that's the S, okay? And let's do S dot sort, okay? We can do order, uh, uh, we can do reverse. Okay, go through. Okay, and we print S. Okay, so the result will be reverse order. Okay, it will be reverse order. Okay, so that if you want to uh, do reverse order. And here we may also have some list I had uh, three, one, okay, two, four, okay, ten, two, okay, uh, one, nine. For example, we have a list of uh, points. We have list of points. So we can basically do this one. Let's do P1 equals a solid, okay, uh, points, okay. We do use a key and key, we do lambda x, okay? And lambda is getting each tuple from the point. And we are going to use the tuple zero for sorting. Okay, so we use that as my uh, function. So this one would be comparing based on t zero. So that's the x, x coordinates value. Okay, so then we do that. And we can also create a P2. This is also sorted okay, using the point to sort. And then our lambda, our key equals a lambda expression okay, of the P and then we use T1 to do sorting. Okay, let's bring our P1 and the P2.
we go import sorted by S. And sorted by Y. Okay. Okay, so sorted by S, S in ascending order. Sorted by Y, Y in ascending order. Okay. Okay, so that's a sorted, and you can find out the index of the first occurrence. So this is somewhat like a find, okay? Somewhat like a find in string. So the name mm, is a little bit uh, not, not really uh, user-friendly over here, okay? And you do have to insert the count, count is similar, okay? Now we already explained it. Okay, so these are the basic, these operations. Okay, and you can convert a numpy array to list and also list to numpy array. Okay, the advantage of using the array is the numpy array actually is array. So it's actually faster than list. Okay, so you can do this one. You can do um, this one. Let's try this one. We have, we do have a T equal this. So we do T array equals array, okay, and then put T in there, okay. So numP, we don't have numP, so let's actually do import numP as numP, okay. And if you don't know how to install the numP, uh, we do have a video, we do have a video uh, in the class, okay. We do have a video, I'm sorry. Uh, right here, let me actually log in again. It has been a while. So log into your account. And in here, star here, we do have a installation for numerical package. So nump, sidep, and mapplot is all in there. Okay, it's all in there. So that's the nump. So we can declare nump because uh, Python doesn't have array, but sometimes you do need to use the array. So use uh, this to create an array. An array is faster than uh, than list. You, you can con you can actually think about it in this way. Uh, this one is actually convert the array list to array, okay, in Java, okay, similar to that. Okay. And array is faster, okay, array is faster. Okay, array is faster. Let's see, sort it, okay. So it become this, okay, it become this. Uh, and it is also ND array, okay. So let's try ND array. So we can do this one, okay. We do one, two, okay. So we do this one, three, four, okay. And we put it into a matrix M. This one is two dimensional array, okay. Two dimensional array, we call it matrix, okay. And we do M1 equals numP dot arrays of the M, and we do point M1, okay. So that become a matrix, okay. It's not this of this anymore. It actually is become a two dimensional uh, array. Okay, and you can also use ND array, ND array, okay, N dimensional array. We can also do that, okay. And later we'll talk about NumP array. Okay, later we'll talk about NumP array. At this moment, uh, object cannot be interpreted as an uh, integer, okay. So your M is not okay. So let's do this, okay. We will do ND array later, okay. We'll do ND array later. 
Okay, anyway, these are the conversion of these two NumPy array, okay? And we'll talk about NumPy array later. Later in later part of the chapter, we do have the NumPy array, okay? We are going to do that later. So at this moment, just know about it is convertible, okay? To NumPy array, that's it. Comprehension list that we already explained it, okay? So here you can have such a tokens and then you uh, actually do join it into a string, okay? Uh, let's see, you have A, okay? So you create each word and you from each word you get the first letters, okay? Get the first letter and you join them and print it into a string, okay? And that's that. So let's copy, uh, let's open this, uh, this file. Okay, let's open this, this file. As an example, uh, lecture two, let's open the this file. So, this file we actually pick every first character from the words, okay, and we join in the pointers, okay. And second one, we actually find every words, okay, and we join it. Uh, this is the same operation, and we can also find each last word and join them, okay. And we each middle word to join them. So that's the use of the comprehension list, okay. So first one, every first letter I am a G, S F W H S, okay. And second one, the same, okay. Second one, the same. So one's last character, so it should be uh, I M A D T, okay. I M A D T, okay. Middle one, middle one, you do uh, words length divided by two, so it is it, I and then M and then A and then this O, I think uh, divided by two is this one. And then divided by two, I say this one got D, okay. This one got O, this one got N, this one got G, this one got O, okay. So that's the list. That's the list, okay. That's the list operation. Sorry. So let's one, let's look at the set. Okay, let's look at set. Set is similar to tuple or list, okay? But it is similar to tuple, but it's non-recurring, okay? You can add element to it, but it actually is non-recurring. So set uh, can only have uh, distinct data, okay? And you, if you know about set, you can check the membership, whether they are, the data is in there or not, the length of the set, okay? And you can use the less than equal to to check the subset, okay? Greater or equal to to check the superset, okay? And then you have union, intersection, and difference, and also uh, difference, okay? And then you'd have copy, okay? So that's a set, okay, that's a set. So let's look at this one. Uh, to add a data into it, you can use union, okay? You can use union. So let's see here, okay? Let's create a new <clears throat> file called set one. Okay, so here, let's do this one. We have a set, and this one, let's have an empty set, okay? So this empty set. Now I'm going to add data to it. So we use a uh, plus equals uh, one, okay? Then let me put in my S, okay? Okay, so plus equal not allow. Okay, plus equal not allow. So how could we uh, add a element to it? So how about let me do a pen. So a pen. A pen is also now okay. How about we use the word add?
add is also not okay. How about we do insert? Okay, so this is not convenient, okay? So in fact, this one, if we really want to do the editing, we probably still want to uh, put it into uh, a list. Okay, come on to just this one. And then we do list. okay? And then we do uh, append, okay, this one. And then we do convert it back to s equal s list. Okay, and we convert it back to set. But this actually is tedious. Okay, this one is tedious. So to add a new member by this actually is tedious and slow. Okay, tedious and slow. It doesn't make sense. Okay, it doesn't make sense. So we uh, let's keep it this way. Okay, let's keep it this way. So here, let's actually do the following things. Let's define a function called add, okay? Let's set and a value, okay? We would like to add a value into the set. So we do this one, we create a S, okay? And we do a union, okay? Union of the set of the value. Okay, and we return our set, okay. Okay, so let's see this one. Okay, let's do this one. So here we have set, okay. So let's do set, but uh, let's do add this set with uh, one. Let's do this one with two, okay. And let's print this, okay. Okay, it adding in the two, okay? It adding in the two. But how about actually remove, okay? Okay, if we want to do remove, then we do S uh, actually minus equal. We, we, this one actually is using union. This one actually is using the so-called uh, difference. It's using sub difference. Okay. Okay, so only the Element two cap cap, okay. Only the element two cap cap, okay. So these are the operation for set, okay. Uh, you can cover it back to this to do operation, but that would take longer time. So try to use union and the difference that to use to for adding and subtraction, okay. And we also have intersection, okay, and set difference, and also superset subset operations, okay. D41, you can look into the example code, okay. D41, you can look in, into the depo, uh, example code. Next one, I'm going to cover the dictionary. So dictionary, I would like to go through the slices because some student might not be uh, comfortable about dictionary. So dictionary, this allow us to store and retrieve item from sequential collection. So it's element by element, okay? But sometimes we do want to use a key value pair, okay? Key value pair in uh, Java, it is so-called uh, map, okay? Or hash map. So in a way that a dictionary is also very efficient because hash map, the, the so-called uh, complexity is auto one when you access it, it's using H code. So it's very efficient, okay? It may even be faster than your linear search in a list, okay? Because it's using the H code. 
Okay, anyway, so here we can call it a mapping, okay? And it's associate array, okay? And you have a password, okay? Kaido supercomputer, okay? Turing genius, bio uh, mono, monopoly. So this one is the name, and this is the definition of the name, okay? So that is the key value pair, key value pair. Remember it's separate by column, okay? And, and uh, okay, and the next side usually is using string, okay? So you need to use double quote, double quote for the key, okay? So it's uh, hashing the string to some hash code, okay? So you can do dictionary key to access the data, okay? Access the data, okay? And that's the dictionary basic, okay? So right here, what we would like to do is, okay, before we go further, let's actually look at this one. When are we going to use a dictionary? So let me call it object one. A dictionary actually is the object in uh, JavaScript. So we have a student one, okay, let's actually have a student one. And this student one may have the name. And this name is, let's call it Eric Chow, okay. And then age, let's try to use 15, okay. And then four, let's have 20. Uh, 99, okay. So this is a student and I print, and I actually do print a student one, okay. And that's wrong, okay. Okay, now let's actually do this one. Let's do student ones. Uh, actually, this one, let me put mass okay, equals 88. So let's pull in student one. So this one is to add um, data to you. Okay, so it's somewhat like uh, the object in uh, JavaScript, okay? And you can create an add, uh, element at any time. So let's create another one called student two, okay? And you use a dictionary, okay? And you do pull into my student two. So my student two at this moment, it will be empty, okay? It will be empty. So now let's do this one, let's do student tools. So it's called Arial, okay, Arial. And then student tools, age equals 16, student two, Or of course, uh, 76, you can choose mass, of course, 44, whatever. So you can create a dictionary first and then add data field later. Okay, or you can create the student by the listing of key value pair. Okay, either way should be fine. Okay, so let me print it this way. Okay, okay. That's that, one more. Okay, so we actually create a second student, okay? And sometimes you can also use uh, student. So, 
three equal default dictionary. Okay. Now what's the difference between default dictionary and dictionary? And this one is still default dictionary. Oh, let me see. Let me see. One moment. Okay. Let's actually do Python default dictionary. Okay, D4 dick. Okay, it's called D4 dick. So how can we use that? It actually is dictionary like that. Okay. And we have D4 dictionary. So D4 dictionary. Oh, you need to uh, from collections uh, import D4 dictionary. Okay. And that's that. Okay. Let's see. So default dictionary, what's the purpose of default dictionary? So right here, okay, default dictionary. Python use an order collection. Okay, we use that, okay. Unlike the data type, so it actually is key value pair. Okay, this means a tuple can be uh, a key, okay. Okay, whatever, as dictionary. And default collection data presenting collections and default dictionary is a class of dictionary, return dictionary like object. The functionality of both dictionary default are almost the same. You set up default dictionary, never raise key, key error. Okay, so it never key. Even if you miss it, it won't raise a key error. Okay. Okay, so that actually has some advantage. Okay. So here we do need to do from collections import uh, default. Okay. So do So right here, let's try student three because student three is uh, equals uh, Brian. Student three age. Let's try seventeen. Okay, student three. Or the course 100. Okay, so let's try to do this one. Let's pull in student three. Let's try to get the mess. Okay. Get a mess from D4 Dick. Okay. Cannot import the default dictionary. Let's see one more time, okay? Ah, uh, it's lowercase. Okay, that's not uppercase. Sorry for that. It's just lowercase. Okay, so it's lowercase. I just wonder. I never see capital classes. Key error. Okay, so mass is not in there. This one, no. So it's still reporting the key error. Okay, so D4 tick still reporting the key error. Uh, this one actually is not what it said. Okay, let's see. It's not the same as what it say over here. Okay. Okay, this one I still need to check. Okay. Why are we using default tick? But some people prefer default tick. Okay. This one I am not hundred percent sure. But my original impression is 
it will give us some default value, okay? Okay, that's actually the dictionary. Let me comment this one now, okay? And right now we can do for loop, okay, so try this one, okay? So for uh, key value in students, student one, okay? So put in your key, okay? So this for loop actually is getting key, okay? This all of getting key. Let's try a different one. Let's try for tuple in students and items. Okay, so tuples with uh, it will create the student uh, key value pair tuple. Okay, key value pair tuple. Okay. And next one, we can do for key in student find the keys, okay. This one's still key, okay, this one's still key. And we can also do for the value in student one the values, okay, and this one we get value, okay. So remember, dictionary you have several way to do traversal, several way to do traversal, okay. And you must know which way you actually prefer. You must know which way you prefer, okay. The traversal you have several way you can do it. Okay, so that's that. Hmm. Okay, so that's about the dictionary. So key here is the operation. You can check if a key in the dictionary or not. You can create a sequence of the key, that would be a list. And also sequence of values. And you can also uh, create sequence of tuples, okay? And you can delete a certain element by deleting the um, the the, uh, the dictionary with certain key, and you can do clear clear will clear every uh, element. Okay, and you can use a get key and uh, default. Okay, uh, that's the do uh, actually uh, get value. But this one I still don't think is actually a good idea to do that. Okay, you can get tuple or you can get a key, okay, that actually uh, would be easier. Okay, so this portion is our uh, dictionary, okay. Now we are going into the NumPy data type. And this one is not standard Python, so it is optional. None of the homework or assignment is associated with this section. But before we go into there, let's go back to our data type. So Python data type, Python data type, we have string integer flow and Boolean, and integer is the int data type. Okay, in C language, we have a byte, I'm sorry, char, C language, you have char, C, C double plus, we have char. We have short integer. We have long integer. We have long, long integer. Okay, something like that. And 14 point, we have 14 and double and double, double. Okay, so like in C language. So basically, primitive data type usually have these four major type. And then sometimes, they have some subtypes, okay, in different languages. And Python only had these four types, okay. And that's atomic data. Then we have the composite data type. The composite data type 
here, let me see here. Basically you have record and record is like structure. So you put two data into this. So some, sometimes record is also similar to the Python's tuple, but record in C language or C double language is actually a MIDI class. That's the class with constructor and uh, functions, okay? In C double plus it's a MIDI class, okay? And it's always data always public. So it's a special type of the class in C double plus. In C language it's more like structure or record or tuple, okay? And array, array we have string, tuple, arrays, and list. In Python basic type, they don't list no array. But here, that's why we would like to talk about the NumPy's uh, array type. Okay, so array is a fixed size composite data. And this actually is a flexible size. Okay, and that is the difference. So right here, I try to review this different data type to tell you uh, these different types, they exist in different languages and they may have different implementation in different languages, okay? And we use Python as our pilot language to learn this programming language concept. But sometimes I would also like to add the knowledge for different languages, okay? And then we have set a map. And usually set a map are uh, using the hash set or hash map to implement that, okay? Okay, if you don't know about these two uh, data structure, you better go back to look at Java, your Java or your C double plus knowledge, okay? And Python directly give you the built-in data type, so that is more convenient to use. And Python language give you a very flexible way of handling these different data. So it's kind of very useful. Then C language also has a pointer, C, C double plus is a pointer and some other languages don't have very few. And file, we don't talk about file over here. Okay, so these are the composite data type in different languages, okay? And in previous hour, we talk about the change of different data. So right here, before we go into the, the so-called uh, lumpy array, let's look at one more time. Uh, we talk about this object, uh, this object actually is the dictionary type. Okay, we talk about dictionary type. So we have this set, okay, this, this different thing. So here, let's actually look at the conversion. Okay, the conversion. So here I may have a data of X that is, let's see, uh, we, may, we may create a X. Okay, let's do this one. Let's do import numpy that uh, numpy, okay, that import numpy. Uh, okay, so let's import numpy as np, okay. And then we create x equals uh, np dot linear space. Okay. And here we create from zero to 10 and then 101 point, okay. So this is zero to 10 and 101 point. Let's drop it, okay, let's try to use 11 points. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 10, this is X. So let's print the X, okay. Let's print X to see what it is, okay. So this linear space function from numpy, okay, let's see, will give us these data, okay. But as a numpy data, and it's dot, it's not using comma, okay, it's, it's using dot. So we should actually convert this one to list, okay? So that become a list. In this case, it become a list, okay? And when you print out, it become a list type, okay? It become this type, okay? So then we may have a Y based on the X. So let's pick this one of the, let's use, uh, uh, square root, okay, so numpy dot square root. Okay, we convert the x, each x, so let's use t, okay, for any t in x, 
okay? T is a time point. So let's assume that X is available and each instance we call it the T, okay? And there's a point called F of T and that's the Y available, okay? And this one equals square root of T, okay? So that's the equation we see. So let's do this one, let's just save, okay? So uh, here I do use the MapRite using Pedia and show, okay? And that's a plot. So here I'm going to uh, import, okay, highlight. Okay, let's do this. Let's do from pilot, okay. Import star, okay. And we plot our X and Y and in blue color, okay. Plot plot X versus Y in blue color. So as you can see right here, okay, as you can see right here, uh, the Python and NumPy is very good to process the data, okay, to process the data. Okay, one moment, please. <clears throat> so it plugged out, okay? So right now that's 11 points. So the curve is now very smooth. So let's add to 101 point. Let's try one more time, okay? This one is close. Let's try one more time. Okay, so it's very smooth. It's a square root function. So what I want to say is NumPy is a package. And NumPy provide many uh, good function for us to deal with data. And NumPy and the list, okay? NumPy and the list and uh, the array and the tuple. Let's do this way. This is the central processing data. So it has the uh, addition, append, remove, insert. Okay, so it's very convenient in terms of handling the data operation. So it can be used to convert to your stream. Okay, it's actually very easy to convert to stream. And it's actually also easy to convert to set to make it like more like a, a no duplicate, okay? And you can use tuple, okay, to convert to list, or you can build in the tuple to become list uh, elements, okay? And to list, you can also build into a dictionary. Okay, you can build two list into a dictionary. Okay, so that is also something you can do. So let's try uh, this one. Let's try this one. Okay, let's try this one. We can also do uh, building two list different conversion. Okay, two list different conversion. So let's try first thing. First thing that's actually we have the X and Y that is okay. Both are list. So let's create something called uh, points. So points that use uh, zip function, okay. So point equal zip, zip in what, zip in my X and Y to zip in two point. So, so by zipping this, okay, at this moment that's actually coming out my uh, protein, okay. We'll do protein later. So at this moment we do not need the protein. So let me come in and out, okay. So I do have two list and I can zip them into point. So that's a print now my points. Okay, that's print now my points. Okay, let me actually close my protein. Okay, sorry for that. Okay, that's actually on the call. Okay, after we run the call, uh, it's a zip data, okay? So this zip, we cannot see it. It zip into a zip object. So that's actually convert that zip into a gist, okay? So basically you have X and Y two list. So X is a list, Y is another list, okay? 
So we kind of dip them into, dip them into a tuple, okay? Dip every two elements of X, Y into tuple. And each one of them are uh, a point. Okay, that's a point. Okay, so let's try one more time. Let's actually run it. Okay, so as you can see right here, you have many, many points. Each one of them has X and Y. Each one of them, you have X and Y. So that's zipping, okay, that's zipping. And by zipping this, we can do sorting, okay? So do we do sorting, we do sorting based on Y values or sorting, okay, our points. And then key value equals the lambda of the tuple and tuple, we use a tuple of the Y first. So we sort Y first. So with Y first, okay. Then we do sorting one more time. Oh, this one let me do reverse. Okay, let me do reverse. Let me do reverse. Okay, and here let me show it one more time using X. Let's also do reverse. Okay, so now the point is because we saw the X later, so X is a primary, Y is secondary, okay? So if two value of the same Y, uh, you, the smaller one will go first. So first one is zero, zero, okay? So that's a sorted result. And then we can do unzipping them. Right now, because I am using Mm, I'm using what same value, okay, same value. So you cannot see, okay, we are using same value. So you cannot see how we saw the data. So right now this one, the X, Y, we are using the linear space. So we cannot see. So let's do this one, okay. Let's keep this portion in the file. Okay, let's keep this portion in the file, conversion. So let me create another one called conversion one the py okay so let me create conversion with the py i'm going to copy cut this portion from conversion to conversion one so we don't have conflict okay so i'm still going to copy my uh numpy and uh, that over here okay so let me put it over here so we don't have s and y that's not a problem okay we don't have x and y so let's do s equals uh, here we should have, okay, let's do, uh, here let's do uh, import. Okay, random as RD, okay. And we do random number, okay, so random dot rent integer, okay. Zero to 100, okay, for I in, a uh, range of 101, okay. That's the X value and Y value, let's do the same thing, okay. So this one, we use a random number generator to do it. But right here, let's do for each X, Okay, and it's T, okay. And because X and T not related, so we will see uh, some sort of a random value, okay. So, so let's look at the point first. Okay, right now we do see some point. So this point are uh, random, okay, like this, random like this. Now let's actually look at the point after sorting, okay. So this one also okay. So 
after sorting with the list, okay, with the list. Okay, after sorting, we got this. Okay, so after sorting because we do reverse. So bigger number will show first, okay? So let's don't do reverse now. It will be smaller number go first, okay? Let me see, let me uh, actually save it, okay. So after sorting one four, okay. So two, two, two with 38 and 48, okay. Because we saw the Y first. So the smaller Y will go first. Okay, it will go first if you have the same X, and X is uh, primary, so we saw it later, okay? So this show you how to use a dip to associate two parallel array into one uh, zip list, okay, zip list. Now we want to unzip them, okay? To unzip them is not too hard. So let's use X, okay, X new equals, Okay, so this one is actually new. So this unzipping then. You get each tuple and you get the first element, okay? And you get a second element that's your, your Y value, okay? And let's do plotting, okay? So let's do figure plot, okay? X new and Y new, okay? Uh, let's use in the skater chart. Okay, let's use the skater chart. Uh, something on this sheet, okay? Uh, the value is not integer, so let's do this one, okay? Each tuples value, let's actually, let's do this one, let's see. Uh, here, let's see, something wrong, okay? Square loop? Let me say, oh, okay. So when the integer, let's see, we do not have square root, okay. T for T in points. Okay, T in points, we get every tuple. Uh, point is a list of tuples, okay? Let's say it one more time, and let's actually run it, okay? The sorting portion is okay. And after that, it say that, okay, my prior life package in plotting data, it doesn't plot, okay? It doesn't plot because it is blue. So let's take out this blue, okay? It should be a uh, color equal to blue, okay? It should be something like this. Sorry for that, so it's wrong one more time, okay? Okay, so this one is the plotting with that, okay? Plotting with that. So anyway, here, let's see. This one is unzipping from the list of tuples into list, 
Okay, we need to do this. So let's try actually coming this one out. Now I'm going to create dictionary, okay? Create dictionary for it. So let's actually put it over here. Okay, so let's create dictionary for it. And let's try this one. Let's try a uh, dictionary. So actually point. Okay. We need something for dictionary. Okay. So for each X in uh, actually in your, your, okay, your points. Okay, in your point. So it, your, uh, actually your points. Uh, let's see here, you should get your X, okay? Uh, point is a list of the tuples, okay? So each one of them, you get a tuple, okay? You get a tuple. And then you would like to say your point tools zero equals uh, T one, okay? And let actually do print. Uh, print point two. Oh, sorry. Print point two. Okay. Okay. So point two, yeah, you have zero seventy eight one one two twenty. Okay, as you can see right here. For each key value, for each key value in your point, there is a value associated with it. So we put that zip, zip it, zip it, uh, zip it list. Okay. So let me explain it one more time. Originally, we have an X, okay, array, okay, X list, Y list, okay. And we kind of doing zipping it into a point. And this point become a point list. Now we put this one one more time. We put this one into this format. Okay. So each one of these is a tuple we put into a key and value pair. Okay, so these are the conversion of uh, this different data type between uh, tuple, list of tuple, and zip into array, into two list into a uh, list of tuples, and then also converting your uh, list of tuple into dictionary. Okay, into dictionary. So these are different way of converting your data from one composite data type to the other. Okay, now we finish the, this different data type and their conversion. So what I would like to want to say in this one is the uh, NumPy array. So the NumPy array, NumPy array, NumPy has many data types and NumPy's uh, main primitive data type we can go back so numpy is a primitive data type one moment, okay? Numpy is data type. Uh, we do not have the slides for numpy data. Uh, numpy has provide a lot of storage classes for a data type, okay? So here we do not see, it's okay. Uh, numpy support arithmetic operations, statistic operation wise operator, copy and the viewing array, stacking, and the searching, sorting, counting, mathematical operation. So it's very useful operation for data processing. Okay. So here, let's see, we may be able to create a NumPy array. Okay. So first NumPy array, single data element, we call it scalar. Okay. Scalar, single data. And then two data we put into a vector. Okay, 
and a 3D data we call it a, a 2D data we call it a matrix. 3D or above we call it a tensor. Okay, so these are the idea of the data and its dimension. Okay, so NumPy array, NumPy array, we cover the following different categories: attributes of the arrays, indexing of the array, slicing of the array, reshape of the array. Okay, and split and joining of the array. So first thing is that we can create a, a NumPy array by putting in a list into data. So the main difference is on the list side, we can actually manipulate the data better, okay? Manipulate the data better, okay? On the NumPy side, NumPy array side, it is faster and more support for numerical operations. So you sometimes need to switch between this and NumPy array, okay? So convert from this to NumPy array is NumPy array. Convert this one back to uh, this, you just use this data. You will be able to convert your uh, sequence in NumPy array back to this, okay? And there's a function called maximum. You can do maximum, the data that maximum you find three, okay? And there's an n dimension, I'll give you the dimension. There's a shape available, okay? Size and data type, okay? These are parameters for each NumPy array, okay? So basically you can have NumPy that arrange six, you return array element, Okay, and you will start by A range. Okay, this one's A range. Okay, A range is starting from zero to five. Okay, so this N will generate data from zero to five. Okay, that's up to a mass one. Okay, it is some sort of array type. So this is A range function. Okay, uh, you can create zero or ones. You can create zero or ones. So let's actually try to use my program, okay, for a moment. So let's create another one. This one is called array1.py, okay. So you can create a array using numpy.array, okay. You put in your data, one, two, three. This one we already teach you. But here you need to do from pilot import spot and also uh, import numpy SMP. Okay. And then this one, you can go back to this number one if you do this from array one. Okay. So put your array one and put your this one. Okay. Okay, so you see it's array actually is no comma, okay? Array is no comma, but this has comma, okay? Now, let's try another one, okay, try another one. So we can do matrix number one equals array, okay? And this one, we put a metric in here, okay? So we do, okay, something like this, okay? And here we do the row number one, so one, two, comma. Okay. And then do three, three, four. Okay. Something like that. Okay. And then we do, we convert that to matrix one. So let's pull in matrix number one. Okay. With this data. So usually I control the data in that way, that is a matrix. Okay. But later I may put them into more condensed format. More condensed format because we don't have that much area to put such a metric every time. Okay. And this one we can do print trick one that n dimension. Okay. Print metric that one that uh, size. Okay. Print matrix one that uh, shape, 
the shape is a two element tuple, okay? Because it's a 2D array. So here two is the dimension, the second dimension uh, metric. Uh, four is the total number of element in the two dimensional array. And then we also have shape, okay? We also have a shape, okay? And if you don't like the two dimensional array, you would like to convert it back to one dimensional array. You can do uh, M array equals matrix one that we shape. We shape two, but we shape, but you need to put a tuple, one row. Okay, one row. Second one, we, you actually, you'd like to uh, put into one row and then multiple uh, uh, column. So you would do what? You would do matrix one, the size. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I actually have one more R. Integer is not callable. Okay, let me see. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, you may want to use MP to reshape. Okay, and then you do make three. Okay. Uh, I still, um, I'm sorry, let me try again, okay? Let me look at it. So my matrix, my matrix is there, but how comes my reshape doesn't work? Okay, let me try to look at my reshape function. Okay, one more time. Just do control F, okay? And then find reshape. Okay, here we do have a reshape, okay? Uh, we read it. Oh, okay. It should not be a tuple. I'm sorry. I make a mistake. So here, what we would like to do is actually do matrix okay, one. So here we don't we don't make it as a tuple. Okay. Uh, this is what somewhat uh, very confusing sometimes. Okay. Matrix one, the reshape one and matrix size. Let me actually minimize it. Okay, one more time. Okay. So here we do A that we shape. A we arrange A that we shape. So we do have a matrix one. We have a matrix one. Let's don't assign, okay, let's don't assign. Okay, so that's it to come in on this one. Let me check, okay, one more time. Mm, integer is not callable, okay. Each one that we shape, okay. It require a function, okay, let me see. Okay, let me see, okay, one moment. So there's a numpy reshape, okay? You need to put the array type data into there and the new shape. Okay, new shape. 
Okay, let's see. You do shape 20. You do have the array. You need to do reshape. Yeah, you actually need to use a three two. Okay. So let's go back here. Okay, let me try different things. Okay. I'm not sure of this uh, metric, so let me try different things. So here, let me have a A equals the so-called one, two, three, four, okay? And this one, actually, let me make it a lumpy array, okay? And it's a one by four metric. And I do MP, that is reshape. We shape it to two two type of the data. Okay, so let's look at this one. Okay, so we shaped it. Mm, let me see. Uh, let's assign it to A. Okay. It will shape, but we do not receive it. Okay, so it will shape it to here. Now let's go back. Okay. So our metric one is like this. Okay. We are metric one is like this. So here, let me change it to M1. Okay. To make it shorter. Okay, here let me actually do this one. Let me have the M1, um, okay. So that I know that this is the printout of the M1. So A, I do reshape it, okay. So M1 is over here. So let me do M1 equals M1 that reshape. Okay, and this reshape, I reshape it to one and four, okay, one and four. And let me print now my M1. Okay, sorry for that. I kind of maybe missing something before. Okay, so after reshape, it go back to here. Oh, okay. So after that, it actually is a two dimensional stuff. Okay. So here we may like to do create getting the first one, okay? After reshaping. Okay, and you come back, back to array. So this one you must uh, be aware of what kind of operation you are working on a lot, okay? Uh, and arrays mainly is operation on the array or matrix, okay? And it's useful in data manipulation, okay? So we finish that, okay? About how to reshape your data. Let's continue, okay? Let's continue. Okay, find the maximum shape and do, we do reshape. And we do reshape, and then you can create some list into array that we already discussed. You can create an array of one, 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 three element, or array of zero, 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 three element, and using random number generator to generate three random number, and each of the number is zero to one, but not including one. Okay, it's uh, similar to Java languages, uh, master random. Okay, so that's the random number, and you can create random number of 10 elements, okay, 10 elements, uh, size 6, I'm sorry, uh, up to 10, okay, 0 to 10, random integer. And then you can change the size to 3, 4, 3, 4, 5, okay, that's the data. So let's try this one now, okay using numpy's uh, written generator, written integer, okay. So here, let's actually try this one. Let's try doing this import, okay. Numpy dot random. 
as random, okay? And we can do this one. We actually would like to generate some 100 random number, okay? We will change, uh, try to create some 100 random number, okay? So we do s equals uh, rd dot, okay? Random integer, okay? So here is 10 and then size equals 10. I'm going to try this one, okay? Do it my S. So X is zero to nine, okay? Let's try uh, actually 100. So it's zero to nine for 100 number, okay? So that's the way we generate uh, some 100 random number, okay? And zero to 10, okay? Single digit numbers. Uh, that's the way we uh, generate it. And you can uh, assign the size by different shape assignment using the tuples, okay? Using the tuples to assign the shape, okay? Okay, that's that. That's actually our numpy array. Okay, here are different functions that you can use. Okay, empty, okay, identity matrix. Okay, if you need an identity array or identity matrix, okay, and create an empty array. Okay, yeah, empty array, create zero and then four. Okay, four is return a new array of a given shape and type field with the field value. Okay, uh, four we can fill with some value. So let's try four. Okay, let's try this four. Okay, so 10 element of value one cell, okay. Okay, so here, if this is uh, this one, let's try this one. Uh, F2 equals when this one. Okay, zero to forty four. Uh, and inspective field value. Okay, so it doesn't allow a function for it. Okay, so this one doesn't work. Okay, I'm just trying to do experiments. Anyway, that actually is the sum function supported by NumPy in the array. Okay. So next one, you can do array as arithmetic. So you can create a data of one, two, okay? And you have uh, a data of one, one, okay? And you do plus sign. So when you have two uh, array plus together, you'll be element to element uh, plus, okay? You'll be element to element plus. Same thing for my, minus time and division, okay? Parallel processing. Okay, times, if you times a scalar, it will be uh, each element times the scalar, okay? It, it equal to that, okay. Okay, indexing the slicing is the same as what you see in the string. So we don't repeat it anymore, okay? 
So you can find a minimum, maximum, and sum as well, okay? Then you can convert your array, uh, 2D uh, list to numpy array, a numpy metric, okay? Depending on your shape. You can create ones, you create zeros, or create random negative, okay? Or random integer. So two metric plus together is still element to element addition. It's still element to element addition. Okay, it's still element to element addition. Okay. Okay, one thing that we do want to know is actually, uh, we may have a row vector, okay, that is one, two, three, four, okay. And you can convert it to a column vector. That would be this row dot t, okay. And here you must use a numpy dot array, so you can do the conversion for you, okay. In normal list, you don't have this a transform function, okay. Normal list, you don't get this transform function. I'm sorry, I should actually print out my. R uh, and print out my, okay. Okay, uh, this one, it is not transposed, okay, it's not transposed. Let's see, because I think it's because of the printing mechanism, okay. Let's do C the shape, okay? Let's see what is the C the shape, okay? Okay, it's actually full row and no color, okay? Uh, and it, when we do print C the shape. So let's do this one, okay? Let me use a, uh, import, okay, pp print, okay, pretty print. So let me use a pretty print to print C, okay. Okay, it's array one, two, three, four. Mm, it is array type, okay. It is array type. Oh, it is one dimension, okay. So this one it do transpose, but it's not really the type we want, okay. So that's it. Actually, still be an array. So let's do this one. Let's do the R. I would like to reshape. So let's reshape it to. Let's shape it to four and Okay, and eventually it will become a column vector. Okay, it will be reshaped to four and one. Okay. Okay, that actually is to transpose for a single array from row, row vector to column vector. Okay. And you may have the inner product. Okay, you may have the inner product. So let's actually look at the inner product. Okay. So let's assume that we have uh, A equals uh, one and two, okay. B equals uh, three and four, okay. When we do print A dot B, A dot B will be one times three time, uh, plus uh, two times four, okay.
uh, it actually cannot do inner product. So let's change it to array. So as you can see here, this cannot do a lot of mathematical operation, okay? And you must convert it to your, uh, the so-called n-dimensional array. I'm sorry, numP array in order to run it, okay? So it become 11, it will be three plus eight, okay, three plus eight. Okay, that's the data, okay, that's the data. There's a top product, okay? Okay, that's a top product. Top product, you use DOT, okay? Let's try another symbol, okay? Let's try another symbol. Don't use the DOT, okay? So sometimes we do print, okay? Let's do A at B, okay? Let's do this one, okay? is also 11. So this one, the same as in my product, yeah. Okay, that's the inner product. And we may also have the cross product. You need to use the dot cross, okay? And you can get a sum, okay? And this different data operation, you can find it for the array, okay? You have, if you have further problems, okay? So that product, we finish some, we finish, okay? The metric indexing is similar, okay? You can do zero to one, comma. So remember here, if 2D, you use a comma to separate the X indexing and Y indexing, and you can also do slice it, okay, you can also do slice it. Okay, and material aggregation, you can also find the maximum, minimum, and sum. Okay, then you can also find the x is equal zero. You will give you the quarter maximum and the row maximum. Uh, quarter maximum, you need to use x equals one. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, you find the maximum in the column is x is zero. Maximum in the row is actually x is equals one, okay? That's the rule, okay? Okay, transpose, you do p, you do transpose, okay? But one dimension array, you cannot see it. You have to do with shit, okay? Two dimensional metric, you will see, it, okay? And this transpose and reshape, you sometimes be careful. Okay. Must print it, must try and print it to, to understand, okay? And you may have two dimensional array or three dimensional array. Okay, and the dimension creation. This one, okay, it's just an extension. You can figure it out, okay? Okay, and when you do insert and delete all your data, you may like to uh, uh, look at it, okay? You may like to look at it. So basically you do a pen, using numpy a pen to the matrix in the X zero. So you add this one into one row, okay? Into one row. This is this row label insertion, okay? So the average being uh, inserted, okay? This one insert. So insert, you insert this value into your column one, okay? So in your, your column, your column actually is uh, five. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. So it's an extra, extra column you would like to insert, okay? extra column you let it insert, okay? And the extra column you will insert is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? So you add the extra column into there, okay? Remember the x value of one is column, x value of zero is actually row, okay? 
Okay, you can also do delete. Okay, so delete actually you can delete the metric, and then this two means uh, the the so called row uh, row two. Okay, row two being deleted. Okay. Okay, and here you do uh, create M3. Okay, M3. Uh, this actually is M3. So this one is multiply a row. Multiply a row is just like the normal uh, multiplication or assignment for a row that is equal enough. So this one replaces a two states value. Okay, so states value itself. So states value. Okay, replace that. Okay, this is the end of the chapter two. And there are a lot of things that you can play around, okay? And the later portion of the NumPy data is optional. So we help you to get started, but none of the homework will be associated with it, okay? And if you have any question, just let me know, okay? This is Dr. Chow, you can email me at echow at lewisu.edu or echow510 at gmail.com. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.